Kentucky Mountain Freshman Volleyball Team, RHS Jazz Band and Dance Club. Ileana is escorted by Adam Dang. Adam is the son of Ann Lee Dang and Danny Dang. He is a member of the RHS Marching Band, LULAC, Friends of Rogers, Student Council, and Your Necessary Honors. Freshman maiden escort, Eliana Tremor and Adam Dang. Sophomore maid, Carly Blevins. Carly is the granddaughter of Lynn and Michael England. She is a member of the RHS Varsity Cheer Team and a DECA officer. Carly is escorted by Jake Taylor. Jake is the son of Tammy and Chris Taylor. He is a member of the RHS baseball team, DECA, and FCA. Sophomore maid and escort, Carly Blevins and Jake Taylor. Sophomore maid, Emily Bridgers. Emily is the daughter of Jan and Brad Bridgers. She is a member of the RHS competition cheer, varsity sideline cheer, DECA, and FCA. Emily is escorted by Drayson Volk. Drayson is the son of Shelly Nix and David and Tiffany Volk. He is a member of the RHS football and baseball teams, a member of DECA and FCA. Sophomore maid and escort, Emily Bridgers and Drayson Volk. Sophomore maid, Addie Jones. Addie is the daughter of Shiloh and Mike Jones. She is a member of the Rogers Mountaineer Marching Band, Friends of Rogers, Sea Club, and FCA. Addie is escorted by Torin Christian. Torin is the son of Angelique Morales and Brandon Roberts and Emery Christian. He is a member of the Rogers High School football team and secretary of FFA. Sophomore made an escort, Addie Jones and Torin Christian. Junior maid, Giovanna Martinez. Giovanna is the daughter of Yonelli and Octavio Martinez. She is a member of Hosa, Lead, and Lulac. Giovanna is escorted by Anthony Oliveira. Anthony is the son of Megan and Luis Gutierrez and Luis Oliveira Monse Oliveira. He is a member of the RHS Varsity Boys Soccer Team, Boys Track Team, Lead, and LULAC. Junior maiden escort, Giovanna Martinez and Anthony Oliveira. Junior maid, Delaney Neal. Delaney is the daughter of An Angela and Jeff Neal. She is a member of the RHS Girls Soccer Team, FCA, Letters of Love, Link Crew, Mu Alpha Theta, and RHA. Delaney is escorted by Cole Berry. Cole is the son of Jenny and David Berry. He is a member of the RHS Boys Baseball Team, RHA, NHS, DECA, and FCA. Junior maid and escort, Delaney Neal and Cole Berry. Junior maid, Cameron Ogle. Cameron is the daughter of Sarah and Chris Ogle. She is a member of Friends of Rogers, FCA, FCCLA, DECA, and Lacrosse. Cameron is escorted by Jackson Harrell. Jackson is the son of Julie and Ben Harrell. He is a member of the varsity football team and DECA. Junior maiden escort, Cameron Ogle and Jackson Harrell. Senior maid, Kaylin Bray. Kaylin is the daughter of Stacy and Chance Bray. She is a captain for the varsity cheer team, Civic Consciousness for DECA, a cheer representative in the athletic community, Rogers Lowell Chamber Award recipient, and a six-time All-American cheerleader. Kaylin is escorted by Dane Williams. Dane is the son of Michelle and Dale Williams. He is a member of the RHS football team, where he has been named All-Conference, Arkansas Democrat Gazette Touchdown Player of the Week, and the Northwest Arkansas Player of the Week. Senior maid and escort, Kalen Bray and Dane Williams. 
senior maid Olivia Hall. Olivia is the daughter of Stephanie and DeAnthony Hall. She is a member of the RHS varsity volleyball team, DECA and FCA. Olivia is escorted by Connor Zimmerman. Connor is the son of Erica and Greg Fouts and Karen and Zach Zimmerman. He is a member of the RHS boys varsity football team, an all-state wrestler for the Rogers wrestling team, an FCA officer, and member of HOSA. Senior maid and escort, Olivia Hall and Connor Zimmerman. Senior maid, Emma Kate James. Emma Kate is the daughter of Kelly and Kevin James. She is a Rogers Royals dance captain, DECA officer, member of FCA, Letters of Love, Friends of Rogers and Sea Club. Emma is escorted by Juan Gonzalez. Juan is the son of Mireya Amaraz and Francisco Jimenez. He is a member of FFA and LEAD. Juan is highly active with school and community involvement and serves as an ambassador for new students at Rogers High School. Senior maiden escort Emma Kate James and Juan Gonzalez. Senior maid Carolyn Robello. Carolyn is the daughter of Carolina Sandoval. She is a member of the Rogers Varsity Cheer Team. Caroline is escorted by Carlos Chicos. Carlos is the son of Daisy and Carlos Chicos. He is a member of the RHS Boys Varsity Soccer Team. Senior maid and escort, Carolyn Robello and Carlos Chicos. The crown bearer is J.C. Williams. J.C. is the daughter of Jaden and Rogers High School principal, Lisa Williams. J.C. is in kindergarten at Janie Dar Elementary. She loves to play dress up and do makeup, dance, sing, color, and make TikToks with her older sisters. The football bearer is Owen Tebenkamp. Owen is the son of Amber and Jeremiah Tebenkamp. Jeremiah is a teacher and football coach at RHS. Owen is in kindergarten. He loves to play outside searching for lizards and frogs and fishing. He likes to play football and baseball with his two brothers and sisters. He is currently playing upward flag football. Crown bearer J.C. Williams and ball bearer Owen Tebenkamp. Your 2023 Rogers High School homecoming queen is Marlene Martinez. Marlene is the daughter of Yanelli and Octavio Martinez. Marlene is a member of the Lady Mountie soccer team, is a volunteer coach for elementary soccer teams at the RAC, a member of HOSA, a certified nurse assistant, and a Rogers Lowell Chamber Award recipient. Queen Marlene is escorted by homecoming king, Jacob Jenkins. Jacob is the son of Lisa Leitner and David Jenkins. He is a member of the RHS boys varsity football team, DECA, Link Crew, Friends of Rogers, and a volunteer with the Lions Club. Ladies and gentlemen, your Rogers High School Mountaineers 2023 homecoming queen and king, Miss Marlene Martinez and Mr. Jacob Jennings and their court. Thank you for joining us this evening and go Mounties!
back. Number two, Dane Williams. The head coach for the Rogers Mounties is Chad Harbison. And now we ask that you please stand, remove your hats for a moment of silence, and then the country's Pledge of Allegiance, and then the playing of our national anthem. First up, our moment of silence. Thank you. Our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Now, please remain standing for the playing of our national anthem by the Rogers Mounties High School Marching Band.
Welcome to Whitey Smith Stadium in Rogers Mounties football. In a big 6A battle for 6A West against the Bentonville West uh, Wolverines. It is a battle between the 1-1 one one in Conference West Wolverines versus the 1-1 one one Mountaineers. A big contest tonight and a cooler evening. And uh, it looks to be a really tightly contested contest. We, uh, both teams are very similar in their offensive styles and defensive styles, so uh, the team that executes the best probably should uh, uh, prevail tonight. Joining me tonight is Coach Steve Hookfin, and uh, joining me to help tonight's broadcast. Steve, uh, what did you see about the Mounties last week, or what do you expect here tonight? What are your thoughts? Well, I expect a lot of points to be put up. I don't think we've had a problem scoring points. Uh, we've got to have some opportunistic stops, and I think we're going to have to establish our run game early on in the, in the game. I couldn't agree more. Some of the keys to victory um, for the Rogers Mounties are take care of the football, obviously, and the defense needs to eliminate the big plays. So we saw that last week, Coach, with uh, Fayetteville. Uh, they threw for almost 600 yards on the Mounties, and, and their quarterback had five touchdown passes, and they're almost all big plays. And uh, so the Mounties have to work on eliminating the big plays. And on offense, uh, go back to what they did best. They, they, they need to establish a run involved multiple weapons. Uh, Braxton Lindsay had two TDs last week. Jeff Regan had two TDs. Verser had one and 100 yards. Racing Cash had five, t five catches and 56 yards. If they spread it around and use multiple weapons, I think the, the Mounties will keep them off balance. Absolutely. I mean, our size is definitely going to be for our advantage. I think a guy that we've got to get involved early is Jansen Garner. I think he could be the X factor tonight. I agree. Number 11, Jansen Garner, the senior, 6'4", 205, and uh, he's a hard target to miss and uh, just been doing it, uh, playing since his sophomore year. Um, the West defense, they run a 3-4 defense, and they zone on the back end. So Rogers will go to like a, a lot of trip set and then move to one backside safety to get some more one-on-one -on -one opportunities. So we'll look for, for that tonight as well, see if that if Mattis can uh, – take advantage of those opportunities. It'll be interesting to see how many times we go empty tonight. Yeah. We I think that empty set against that zone defense can really um, be to our advantage tonight. I agree. Now, West, uh, Benville West leads the series 6-1. to one. This will be the eighth meeting of these two high schools. West is a newer high school, and uh, West has kind of had Rogers' number, um, but uh, we're looking to uh, we're looking to keep the Mounties Momentum going.
So we've got the one common opponent in Fayetteville. That's correct. Um, I think, as we all know, we had an opportunity to win that game last week. Um, the score for Bentonville West against Fayetteville was not as close. It was a little bit lopsided, in my opinion. It was. It was. There we go. That's better volume. Um, yeah, it was. It was really lopsided. Um, uh, Fayetteville beat West 56 to 21, and uh, and we lost to Fayetteville, you know, 47-42, and really had that ball and and we're, we're driving and uh, unfortunate uh, there at the end where we fumbled it uh, had the opportunity to go win that ball game and and in order to beat Fayetteville in Fayetteville to to beat the man to be the man you got to beat the man Absolutely. <laughs> that's right you know what Absolutely. I mean so we had our opportunity um, now uh, as far as uh, uh, Benville West here tonight uh, they've got a couple of players that uh, we'll keep an eye out on uh, Lane Jeffcoat, you'll you won't miss him. He's number 77. He's about six foot nine, to uh, 75. Uh, he is committed, verbally committed to Rice University next year. Jackson Bruss, number two. He's their all-around guy. He's he catches balls. He plays defense. He returns punts. We'll be calling his name a lot tonight. Also another receiver, Harrison Harris Vinson. Uh, he's he's been offered by Arkansas State. So they they do have some talent there on the on the west sideline. Here come your Mounties. Here come the Mounties. We've got a very nice crowd here tonight. Homecoming crowd. And as far as the student body is concerned, it was pink out tonight. And uh, we've got one of the best student sections in the state of Arkansas, in my opinion. I hear you, Coach. They show up you. and show out every Friday. Check out May Reverse. He's all fired up tonight. Glad to have Mavie back. Yep, yep. Tell you one thing concerns me, and I know the coaches did a great job of addressing this all week, is we can't have a slow start mm -hmm. and we can't have a hangover from last week's game. That's right. Yeah, we got to keep that momentum going and and uh, score on the first drive and uh, put put West on their heels. Now it is a, it is the first time that we've had some chilly weather. I mean, it, the forecast call for 64 or, or 60 degrees, but it feels much cooler out there because of the wind. The wind is going from north to south, so left to right on your screen on your TV and uh, and it, the wind is about a 10 to 12 miles an hour so that will play a factor in the tonight's game absolutely football weather as they say that's right the head coach for the West Wolverines is uh, Brian Pratt he's been here at West since 2015 Pri previous to that he was in Oklahoma his record is 32 and 25 while at West so and he's made, they've made the playoffs in each of the seasons that he's been here. So he's had a pretty good success over here at West. Looks like we're lining up to kick off. We talked about big plays earlier. One thing we're going to have to do is keep the receivers in front of us, and we're going to have to wrap up and tackle. We're going to have to gang tackle tonight. We're going to have to have a lot of hats to that ball tonight. Yeah, we had issues with that against uh, Fayetteville. Um, Fayetteville, you know, they're a big, big strong team, but we got to bring our feet and uh, stay with it. JT Miller set, set to kick off tonight. He does have the win with him. Uh, as, as prolific as he is at putting in the ball in the end zone, I expect this ball to be deep in the end zone. And it is. So it will be a touchback for Bentonville West. Starting quarterback for Bentonville West is uh, Dalton Rice. Uh, the re running back with him is Cole Edmondson. And uh, receivers Jackson Brust, William Anderson, and Harris Vinson. Mounties look like they've got a little zone defense of their own. And uh, West is coming out with a one back set. That's Edmondson back there with Dalton Rice. Trips to the top side. Gives it to Edmondson. Oh, nice tackle. Nice tackle. That's Corbin Norris, number 31. He will strike you. He will. He's an aggressive player, and uh, if he's on point, reads his keys, he is a heck of a ball player. That was a great start to the game for Corbin Norris. He's one of those down, downhill linebackers. Not a lot side to side, but he's, he's great downhill between those running lanes. Dalton Rice back to pass, looking right off to the sideline. That's Jackson Bruss, but there's Isaac Chapman who reels him in. Pass was complete to Jackson Bruss. But Isaac Chapman reeled him down and for no gain. Ball's on the 20-yard line, still third and 10. 
Denver West going no huddle, two by two set it looks like. Don Rice gets the bet, goes back to pass, looks like it's going to be a screen. It is a, a screen, 23, that's Harris Vincent, I believe. Runs him out of bounds, but not before he gets close to the first down. I think it may have it. It's going to be really close. Yeah, it does look like it's going to be close. Oh, it's right on the nose of the ball. It does cross the, the first down marker. Corbin Norris was there in the right there near the receiver. He took a bad angle. Well, they, they do run a lot of tunnel screens, a lot of bubble screens, and you just saw another screen right there that has been effective for them all season. They are the two-by-set two by again. Bring Vincent in motion. Looks like they're going to Edmondson on the side on the swing. Holds him up. Isaac Chapman held him up, and Tyler Pinkerton brings him down. Or Bennett Tyner, excuse me. Look, we have Ed, on the field. Yeah, that's Edmondson. And, I mean, Tyler Pinkerton. Or, shoot. Bennett Tyner, excuse me, Tyler. Brings him down hard. And uh, looks like he's holding his knee. Bennett Tyner was chasing that play really fast. He's playing fast tonight. And it looks like we got a timeout on the field. We can go over the um, – Coach, I'll go over the starting lineup for the Mounties on the defense. And number 96 was Bennett Tyner on that tackle. At defensive end, Nesto Gonzalez, number 55, nose guard. DJ Dara, number nine, at defensive end. Isaac Chapman, who's already had a couple of tackles today. The all-state linebacker, number 28. Number six, Jacob Jenkins at linebacker, who looks like he's going both ways. Tyler Pinkerton, number seven. Corbin Norris, number 31. Uh, looks like Jeff Regan is out of corner there, number one. Andrew Trenary, number 20. Number eight, Marcus Mounts. And number four, Cam Cunningham. Get the start tonight on the defensive side. I think our staff does a really good job with keeping Chapman and Jenkins fresh. They kind of spell each other on offense, but they're really giving us a good look and a lot of speed and, speed and length out there on the perimeter of our defense. Without a doubt. Uh, just good football players, you know, no matter where you put them. Looks like second and about seven from the 32-yard line. And it is the two-by-two two set again. New, new running back in there. It's a, uh, Judah Spence, I believe it is. Go back to passes Rice off to the sideline there. Oh, oh complete. And that was William Anderson on the completion. Jacob Jenkins right there, almost had his hand on the ball, Coach. Yeah, they do a great job with our outside linebackers. They kind of play those games. You don't know if they're rushing or if they're dropping. That time, Jenkins did a great job getting in the flats. I mean, he was right there on the ball. Great job by the quarterback zipping in there, but we're all over that route. Mm -hmm. I don't see it. I don't see them completing that many more times as game progresses. Third and one. Really a big play. Another two by two set. Let's see what the. Oh, he's going for the little swing pass to Vincent. They get it. They get the first down. Talk about Jacob Jenkins. Now, we're going to be susceptible to those quick passes in our zone defense. Mm -hmm. We've got to really rally to that ball. And as we stated earlier, we've got to wrap up and get multiple hats to that football. Mm -hmm. Looks like they're giving Jacob Jenkins a break. Looks like number 22 came in. That Payson Jones? Yes, Payson Jones. That's right. Dalton Rice back to pass. Looks like the Mike looking for the wheel. He's running, rushing to the left side. Up comes Corbin Norris. Norris runs him out of bounds. Great really job. good play. Really good job. See how he broke down there, Coach? He broke down what he didn't get do. He didn't get caught in no man's land. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you'll see that quarterback break contain, and you'll see a linebacker kind of just lose his feet and stop. Mm -hmm. He did a great job of being aggressive and attacking the man with the ball in his hands. Good job in the defensive backfield. Cam Cunningham and also Andrew Trenary and Marcus Mounts. The quarterback did had, didn't have anywhere to go with that ball and had to run it. And the loss of almost one yard. That's a covered sack. It sure is. Second and about 11, and again with the two-by-two two set. Well, we'll fakes it again. Looks like another tunnel screen. They sniffed it out. And he throws it out of bounds. Oh, they're going to throw intentional grounding over here potentially because I don't think there was a receiver. In, oh, the illegal man downfield. Boy, when I watched the game they played against Springdale, they ran a lot of tunnel screens, a lot of bubble screens just like that, and I think the Mounties were ready for it. The Mounties were. The defensive line did a great job of seeing the high head by the offensive lineman 
and staying engaged with their guys and not rushing the field, they're going to run those screens to kind of floor our defense to rush down. Mm -hmm. Umpire is discussing with Coach Harbison whether to take the penalty or, uh, or the loss of down. Let's see what Coach Harb decides here. Now they do declining a legal man downfield. So that's, uh, that brings up the third and 11. Again, lined up two by two. Yeah, there's Braden Nash back there in the backfield. This is a big play right here for the Mounties. Looks like uh, we've got a clock stoppage here. It looks like a... The referees have called time. It's not a time by either team. I'm trying to figure out if the time or the clock. Okay. Looks like they got it figured out. Again with the two-by-two two set. Cam Cunningham up here pressing on the nearest to us. Dalton back to pass. Those cross. Oh, mm -hmm. and he connected. On Vincent. Ran a long out in route. About a 12-yard just past the. Marker and good possession reception there. Jeff Regan on the defense there. They run that in route. Our linebackers are going to have to drop and kind of take away those throwing windows. Mm -hmm. mm, false start. Yeah. I'll bring up first and 15 for the Wolverines. The Mounties have had some really good success defending them. The, the, the Wolverines don't have, the, you know, they're, they're getting those first downs on third and long. So the Mounties have done a good job of keeping them in long-distance situations. It is a two-by-two two set again. It's like Nash back there with Rice. Rice gets it. Going to give it to Nash. Kind of comes up there in the middle. Isaac Chapman and Tyler Pinkerton on the tackle. Gain of about five. I also see Braxton Lindsay in there now on defense as well. Mm -hmm. In the defensive backfield. Yeah, he'll be going both ways. Second and ten. Looks like they've moved Cam Cunningham over there to Harris Vinson, number 23, the Arkansas State commit. Bring motion all the way across. Oh, he's coming back again. Dalton Rice back to pass again, looking up the middle and can't find anything. Goes, takes it down. Slides down to uh, gain of maybe one, maybe two yards. Yeah, yeah. But again, coverage. That's good coverage there. Forced the quarterback to run. Brings up third and about eight. You said it earlier. We've got to not. We've got to eliminate the third and long conversions. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's another opportunity. This is their third opportunity for a third and long first down, and our opportunity to stop them here. That's a, uh, boy, encroachment on the Mounties. Tyler Pinkerton's excited, just jumped over the line. It's gonna, now it's going to be third and manageable. See if Brian Pratt, coach of the Wolverines, calls something else. There's probably two down territory here. For the Wolverines, I would assume they would go for it in third and fourth. They don't pick it up here. Yeah, it, I, I think with this first, that five-yard penalty makes it. Absolutely. If it weren't the five-yard penalty, then potentially it would be punting opportunity. Trip set to this side, empty backfield. Rice back to pass. He looks this way. He's got a possession. Oh, he's going to get the first down again. Number 89, William Anderson gets a, gets a first down. And that's where that offside penalty on our uh, affected that play call. Corbin Norris and uh, Andrew Trenary on the tackle. That is. He, Nash is back there with Rice. He looks like he's going to give it a Nash this time. Cuts it up the middle. So Braxton Lindsay. I think DJ Dara is down there. Nosta Gonzalez as well. Gain of about three or four. Looks like the Wolverines are content to just chew up some clock and just 
methodically go down the field. They don't want to give the ball too many times to this high-powered offense. Empty backfield for Rice. Looks for the little tunnel, tunnel screen. screen. There it is again. Oh, he found a crease. That's 89. That's Anderson. Looks like it's going to be close to a first down. I think Tyler Pinkerton was in there along with Corbin Norris. It is another first down. This is how West does look like a lot like us, where they, you know, we do a lot of possession passes, you know, a five-yard pass, and if we can break it, we go. Yeah. Another two-by-two two set. Rice back there with Nash. Nash has it this time. Looks like hit first by Tyler Pinkerton. Nesto Gonzalez there as well. Host of money's there on the tackle. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to have to have. Yeah. Even in the passing game, we've got to get multiple hats to the ball. Yeah. Kyrie Bonneville, number 50, sophomore. Down in there. So it brings up second and about six or seven. I think it's going to make it hard for us to blitz also tonight with them running so many of those tunnel yep. screens. We're going to have to play down. honest, sound mm -hmm. defensive football tonight. I think that's probably what the coach saw in, in us last week. We blitzed a lot last mm -hmm. week. The two-by-two two set. Rice looks back to the sideline to see if he's going to check to something different. Looks like they do. They adjust. Let's see if the Mounties adjust as well. Looking for the left sprints to the right side looks like he's going to run it tyler pinkerton chases him out of bounds and pushes him out for just a short gain good hustle by tyler pinkerton to push him out of bounds it's going to bring up third and close to five yards i would think mm -hmm. just looking to this left side and uh that was well covered i mean it's about the third time he's had issues trying to find a receiver again right here we can't have a penalty like we did last third down and yeah that was that we've got to make them earn it that penalty um, really gave them an opportunity to for something simple. Got trips. Trip, yeah, trips to this side. Rice gives it to Nash. Nash up the middle and looks like he's going to be short by two yards. It's going to bring it fourth down. But to your point, uh, you know, we, we both believe it's probably four down territory. We got Nesto Gonzalez coming back in. Mm -hmm. Now comes Kyrie Bonneville. So it's a fourth and a long four, and the uh, the wind is in the face of uh, the Wolverines. So this would not be an easy kick for anybody. I smell a screen coming. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. A tunnel screen to 89 possibly. Trips to this side. Harris Vincent to the top side. He's over there covered up by Cam Cunningham. Andrew Trenary down here along with Jeff Regan and Marcus Mounts on the trip set. They're going to – oh, looks like Coach is going to call a timeout. It's a big down here. Oh, big time. It's a big down. Big down. Again, sound, no penalties. Rally to the ball, wrap up, drive your feet. Yes, right. Now, Coach, a lot of folks maybe not know you. And um, I, want, I mean, this is Coach Steve Hookfin. He, he's a principal here at his, I don't know your exact title, but tell us a little bit about yourself here. Hello. Currently, I'm the dean of students here at Rogers High School, and I was at Heritage uh, for a few years as the head coach there. Mm -hmm. um, then came over here and then administration role, and really enjoying my time here. It's, it's outstanding. Um, and, and before that, you were in Tennessee? I was in Tennessee, yes, sir, for 20 years as a, as a high school, college and high school football coach, and um, was fortunate to come to Northwest Arkansas, and I'm, I'm from South Arkansas. Yeah, Arkadelphia. Arkadelphia. I'm Arkadelphia, familiar with Arkadelphia. Arkansas. I spent a couple of years there myself. You went to OBU. OBU. Washtenaw Baptist. That's right. Um, so, and, yeah. And you played football at Ohio. Ohio University. That's exactly right. The MAC. Go Bobcats. Okay, here we go. We need some Bobcat magic here. Fourth and four. They do go with that same set they called earlier. They got Vincent to the top side here in, in a bunch set. Isaac Chapman fakes like he's going to blitz. I wonder if they're just going to go a little – Pass over here, number two. Jackson Brust is a really good, solid player, number two right here. They, when it's a tough situation, they usually go to him. Let's we'll see if they do it again. They look his way. Chasing him out. Isaac Chapman's chasing him. Can't get him. He's going to get the first down. And Dalton Rice gets out of containment. Isaac Chapman can't run him down. And that was a huge first down for West. Looks like he's run out of bound by Payson Jones. 
just lost containment there. Because once again, I think it was it was covered well. I think the defensive backfield has been doing okay as far as understanding their assignment. Isaac Chapman was there on his blitz, took a tight angle. He allowed the quarterback to get outside, and he's our primary force defender there on that play. They're going to give it to the back. Nash is pushing forward. Looks like they're all the way down to the five-yard line. So it's second and goal from about the five, maybe five and a half. They're going right behind UC Big number 77 out there, Coach. That's Lane Jeffcoat. He's a big human. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good basketball player, too. Is he really? Yeah, very good. Very good. He's got the, the height. Yeah, he's in the size and just smart. So here's a two-by-two two set again. Rice looking left. Oh, got good Jackson tackle. Rust over there. But up came Andrew Trenary to knock him out of bounds for really gain of maybe one down to the four-yard line. They ran a rub route to the boundary. Mm -hmm. So when you have your flan on the outside, your quick out by the slot receiver. Mm -hmm. And our secondary did a great job responding to that. As soon as that ball was out of the hands, our DB put his foot in the ground and got there immediately. Yep, third and, third and goal from about the five-yard line. Looks like the Mounties are in press coverage. Kim Cunningham out there with Harris Vincent on the top side. Mounts on the inside receiver. That's Anderson. Mounts has him. Braxton Lindsay coming on the rush. Oh, going on the tunnel screen to Vincent. There it is. Touchdown. That tunnel screen has been effective for them all season. And uh, you see how Dalton Rice just gives gives room, gives room, buy some time. And I see him wearing press coverage there. I wonder what kept Cam from staying in that receiver's hip pocket as he came back inside for that tunnel screen. I wonder if he got chipped by by offensive lineman. I couldn't see it. Yeah, I think I think number 89, Anderson, went out to, to block him because uh, Marcus Mounts is off of the inside receiver by about seven yards. Yeah. So he, if he goes out and blocks the – Cam Cunningham, all he's got to do is catch that ball because uh, the down line or the offensive line is going to go get mounts. And he had just enough room to hit that thing inside and find his way to the end zone. Yeah. That is a big drive. That's a long drive. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a fake. Or, or oh, he dropped it. It's not a fake. Just get him down to the ground. Get him to the ground. Okay. Andrew Trenary had him wrapped up, but uh, – Jackson Brush just missed the handle. Well, it's colder out here tonight, Coach, and that ball is a little slick, a little slippery, and uh, the hands aren't got it right, but that's a big missed extra point in this ball game. Exactly right. When it's cold, it also makes that ball harder. Yep. It's cold, and it becomes harder to touch and harder to handle. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll see that have an effect as we go further into the ball game tonight. 80-yard drive, Coach. On a <laughs> Well, the thing about that drive was, yes, they did a good job. We had our opportunities. Yes. We had multiple opportunities to stop them on third down. The penalty mm -hmm. was huge. Huge. Yeah. One of, one of the things they're going to have to eliminate. And they've been better about the penalties in the most, in the most recent games. And, you know, the first three games, the non-conference games, that, they, that was an issue for them, for the Mounties. They were getting 12 and 10 or double-digit penalties each game. And so um, I, I do feel like they've, they've – uh, got that under contained a little bit better. They've cleaned it up, and those penalties early on, as, as I was watching the games, a lot of that was going to over-aggressiveness. Yeah. Cam Cunningham and Jeff Regan back to kick, return it. Looks like a – Like a sky kick they're lined up to do. Yeah, yeah, a little pooch kick or something like that. It is. Cam Cunningham – oh. Yeah, it's – that's a pretty effective little – against the wind – like that, you throw it up in the wind, it's going to hang in the air, it's going to give your receivers a chance to go down there and get it. He did a good job. Like he called for a fair catch, maybe, maybe that wind a little bit, hung the ball up there, mm -hmm. made it hard from the gauge. Here goes the offense. We've got an answer. We've got to put together a good drive here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they did such a wonderful job last week, passing for almost 500 yards. Four different receivers scoring. But we do have to establish a run. So long ago we talked about the keys to the victory. But yeah. take care of the football and establish a run. Do what they do best. Mounties are best when they run 50% of the time and pass 50% of the time naturally. But uh, you have to be good at running the football 
in order to keep the defense honest. Yeah, we need to keep those linebackers in the box. Establishing run game allows us to do that. It keeps them from dropping back and just bailing out to the passing zones. It'll create bigger windows for us if we can get that running game going. Mm -hmm. The referees are discussing something here. Not sure what it is. It was a big day here. Uh, it's, it's homecoming night, Coach, and uh, we had a wonderful parade on campus. And uh, um, you know, one of one of the lead parade lead floats in the parade was the six A West boys golf team who won the state championship this week. Listen, we're so proud of those guys. Yeah, won the they're going to be announced here at halftime. Uh, you know, the boys that just did, they just did a fun, wonderful job at Rolling Hills Country Club down in, down in Cabot, Arkansas. Cohen Kennard, Maddox Stevens, Jack Scudder, and Noah Regan. Um, combined for a score of 596 to beat Fayetteville by six strokes to win the state championship. So proud of those young men. They did yep. an outstanding job. And yep. you and I know how hard it is on that golf course sometimes. <laughs> we do. <laughs> All right, here we go. Two by two set. Looks like he's going to get to Jacob Jenkins up the middle. Boy, I like that. The homecoming king. Gain of about four or five yards. That's a good play on first down. It is a good play. It's a great play. Opens up the playbook a little bit, kind of establish a run, say, you know, we're, if we need to go right at you, we can. And the Mountains have, against Southside and Fayetteville, they had enormous defensive lines. So we've had issues. Looks like uh, Mabry in motion. There he is again, Jacob Jenkins, oh, all the way through the middle. Oh, like, he oh, might go. Oh, there we go. Just tripped up at the 50-yard line. Yes. Again, that running game is going to be big. And you said it, Benville West is a very good football team. Their defensive line – is not as good as what we've seen here in the <laughs> The last two weeks we have we faced some monsters at the defensive line between Southside and Fayetteville. I mean, just collegiate-level players all over the field with Southside and Fayetteville on the defensive line especially. And uh, so um, now we're kind of, you know, matched up more evenly here. <laughs> that was a great run by Jacob Jenkins. Looks like we're going to give it to Jeff on the end sweep and hangs on to it. Oh, a little jet sweep. Going to get about 11 yards on that. I like how we are establishing the run early. He did a great job of putting his foot in the ground and getting north and south. Yeah. We've seen the he opening. saw something. He, he just, did. He said, let's go. The thing about Jeff, he explodes through the hole. He doesn't hit the hole. He explodes through the hole. Right. Diego Dillette and Connor Zimmerman on the left side over there, left tackle and left guard. I've got two tight ends set. Mm -hmm. Dane gives it to Jacob. Jacob's picking his way. See something on the left side again. It's close to six yards. Another six yards. Running over center, Aiden Libert. Right guard is number 53, Jackson Lister. And right tackle, number 79, Colin Jones. Doing a fantastic job so far. Establishing the run, establishing the line of scrimmage. That'll be a second down and about five from the 34-yard line. 33. They're going to go with a pro set here. Jeff goes in motion. They give it to Jeff again around the edge. Let's see if he ooh, didn't quite read that block as well, but still going to get about three or four yards. Jacob Jenkins did a great job lead blocking there. I wish he could just put his hands on the guy and drive him a little bit more. He did a great job initial contact. Well, it's enough for a first down. So the Mounties have had success on each of the plays gaining. We haven't thrown the ball yet. No. And don't throw it if you don't need to. Right. All right, the two-by-two two set again. Dane Williams back. Oh, Jacob Jenkins to the side. They give it to Jacob Jenkins. Cuts it back up to the left. Oh, look at him carry, guys. Jacob Jenkins is a, is a nice-sized young man. Oh, my goodness. I it's think him. he's <laughs> – I, I see him in the hallways, and he's, he's got to be 6'1", 6'2", 200 pounds. 6'2", 205. Yeah, he's a, he's a nice-looking specimen he, out yep, there. Yep, and he's running behind our offensive linemen are just – Really pushing the guys back right now. Diego Dillette is two, 250. And here they go again with that pro set. See if they're going to go with it. Second and about three. They give it to him again. Maybe first or leading up in the middle there. When well, you got a, a wide receiver <laughs> who's big enough, maybe versus number three, who pulls around. He's 6'4", 208. And the Mounties are driving the ball right down the field. And that's going to be first quarter here. That's a quick first quarter. And the Mounties are down 6-0, to zero, but I really like what I see, Coach. I love it. Right now you have two contrasting styles. You have Benville West came out chucking the ball over the place. 
and you have the Rogers Mounties just pounding the ball right now between the tackles, and they're doing a great job with number one, Jeff Regan, who's establishing the perimeter for our offense. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Establish the perimeter, but also run up the middle so they, they can't cheat either way. Now what this is doing, it's setting up a big play action. Yep, yep, I agree. Now, this football, it feels like a playoff atmosphere to me Well, it, because uh, there's major implications <laughs> involved with this there ball game. There tonight. certainly is. I mean, um, now the, if the Mounties win out, if they, they've got to beat West, they've got to beat Bentonville, they've, they've still got some tough games ahead also with Harbor, you know, and, uh, you know, we still have Heritage and, and Springdale on the schedule. But if you win out, most likely you're the number two seed. However, we do think that Bentonville will beat Fayetteville. <laughs> but uh, so even if we beat Bentonville because of the point differential, we'll still be the three seed. Yeah. If Bentonville beats ben Fayetteville. Mm -hmm. so, so there's still a lot of football to be played um, tonight. We'll check on some scores later as, as this game progresses. But this game is moving fast. The clock is going. The Mounties are driving. They have first and 10 on the, looks like about the 12, uh, now it's a 14-yard line or 13. Yeah, 13-yard line. Dane Williams back there. With, oh, he's going under center here. Gives it Jacob Jenkins. Looks like he's riding behind his blocking there. It's one of the few times I've ever seen Dane go under center all season. Actually, probably the first time I've seen him go under center all season. Second and five. The Mounties still can get a first down at about the three-yard line. So they're still in that pro set. They're going to go under center again. Going to hand it to Jacob Jenkins. He's, oh, and he's going to be in oh, the end zone. Oh, and he runs the man over and gets into the end zone. That's a great drive. Fantastic drive by the Mounties. Connor Simmerman just escorted Jacob Jenkins right into the end zone. That is something that... I really wanted to see by the Mounties tonight is establishing some sort of run. And I know that was one of the keys to the game for the, for the Mounties, establish a run, the first, first thing the coaches told me this week. That's a good, hard nose, punch you in the mouth Right, old, drive. School, old school football. Old school football. <laughs> <laughs> Where, uh, we didn't know what the forward pass was back when I played. I know. <laughs> Grayson right. Cash for the hold and uh, JT Miller and a big extra point. Good hold by Grayson. High snap. Put it down, and J JT put it through the uprights. That's exactly what we needed. And I'll tell you what I like. So we know football is a physical game. Yep. We were very physical on that drive. Not mm -hmm. one pass attempted. And I see the emotion the players are playing with. The seniors, like maybe Verser, is fired up tonight. I love to see his competitive spirits, competitive juices. I mean, when, the, when your senior leader is out there doing that, and he's, you know, he's injured the first three games, so he f probably feels like he's ready to go, and it's a conference game, and he's, he, he wants this game bad. And it, it's, it's rubbing off, you can tell, on the entire team. Absolutely. Even more impressive that he's a receiver, and we know receivers want the ball, and he's in there between the tackles blocking, he, lead blocking for our running back. Yes. That and, says a lot. And loving it. Loving it. And loving blocking. And that, that, that says a lot about him and, and, and the character he is. He just, just wants to win. Just I got to do what I got to do, Coach. Let's just win. He's glad to be back out there with his teammates. No doubt. So JT Miller set to kick. He is kicking into the wind. Man is leading 7-6. to six. We're in the second quarter. 11-27 left to go into the uh, second quarter. Let's see what JT. It's going to be difficult to get this thing in the end zone. He's had a pretty high ratio of doing that. Little number. It's going to spin funny. That's uh, Vincent on the return. Oh, nice, nice tackle. tackle. Pacing, Pacing Jones. Jones. <laughs> Brings him down at the 23 or 24-yard line. He had a, you know, he caught that thing on the run. There was only a couple guys on this side. That was a heck of a play by Pacing Jones. So, um, Braden Nash again, uh, I guess their running back is still out with that knee injury. And uh, Cole Edmondson is out. We're going to get it to Na Nash again up the middle. Looks like he's – oh, nice oh, tackle. Great tackle. I think he made that play right there. 
Pinkerton, number seven. Right. Made him he spin takes out. on a 6'5", 300-pound offensive lineman in the hole, clogs him, makes the running back bounce laterally, and our defense is there to wrap that's him up. That's right. That's right. That's called making the play, not the tackle. That's, our, that's right. That's where he'd be a good teammate. Spun him right into – was it Isaac Chapman who made that tackle? Right into him. Yes, sir. Isaac put him on his back. Now here they go again with uh, second and about seven. They did gain about two or three yards on that play. Trips to the top side. Single set down here. Cam's got on, on Harris Vincent. Back to pass. He's go, looking left. Looking at Jackson Bruss. Oh, oh we got a man we wide gotta, open. We got a break. We got a break in the, in the action. What are we doing? We had a. I mean, we, we, we had a coverage breakdown. We had two men in the flats. We had no one deep on that left side to the trip side. Yeah. That's a breakdown in coverage. You see Braxton Lindsay coming in for Payson Jones. I wonder if that has something to do with the coverage back there. Yeah. I mean, he was wide open. We're just lucky that it's not a touchdown right now because he was 20 yards past our defensive backfield. We've got to communicate in that back end. Mm -hmm. So it is going to be first down on the uh, Mountie 36-yard line. It goes right. He's going to keep it this time. He's running wide. Stay, your feet. Stay on your feet. He's a big boy. Corbin Norris. Made a diving effort there. I think if he just stays on his feet, he can run with them. But he's run out of bounds over there by Jeff Regan and Braxton Lindsay, and I think Andrew Trenary was there as well. Loss of about a yard. Second and 11. On the left hash. Got Vincent and Anderson on, on this side. Jackson brushed to the top side. He's back to pass. He's looking left. Short pass. Ball overthrown and hit hard also by Jeff Regan. Third down. We've got to take advantage of these third and longs. Third and 11. Intended uh, receiver was Mason Hawkins. Brings up another third down, right, Coach? I mean, uh, going to bring up third and 11. A really big play in this ball game. When they have to have it, they've been going to that tunnel screen. Mm-hmm. Looking left, and now they're doing the – oh, they're going to flick it out there. Break down. Break down, yeah, good, good play. Job. Again, multiple hats to the ball. Who's that, Braxton Lindsay? Braxton Lindsay, Corbin Norris. Yeah, they have that inside receiver. They're going to try to fake the tunnel screen. They had that inside receiver kind of run a little little out and go, and uh, but we didn't fall for it. So we had uh, Trenary and Jeff Regan on the back end there that didn't fall for it, and uh, he had to go short on it. So that loss of uh, about a yard. So it brings it fourth and about 12. We've got to keep the receivers in front of us and rally to the ball. Looks like uh, the Mounties are bringing a blitz. They back off it a little bit. Rice is coming up to this side. He's looking downfield. Great it's job by Braxton Lindsay. Diving effort to keep the ball away from the receiver. That is a great play. Looking for Jackson Bruss. Tyler Pinkerton there is along, along with uh, Braxton Lindsay. Turnover on downs. The Mounties will take over on their own 36-yard line. It's the first really break for the Mounties. Get them to stop. It's a great job. Way to respond after giving up that big play when we had a break in coverage there. Mm -hmm. Mounties come out again with looks like it's going to be that tight end set with uh, Verser and Jansen Garner in at tight ends. I think we'll get a big dose of Jacob Jenkins. We didn't see him at all on defense this last series. Right. Looks like the West is going to go with a little bit different set. He's got a little crease there. Kind of. It was open early, and it got uh, shut down. But still a gain of about three or four yards. Tackled by Vincent. He's going both ways, number 23. No, it's that time of year. These ball games really mean a lot. You've got to have your best players on the ball field. Yeah, that's true. Brings up second and six. Looks like a long six. Going trips to the top side. Got Versa Regan and Cash to the top side. They go with Jacob Jenkins up the middle on the right side again. Gain of about three or four. I don't know if this is true. And I have the Mounties even attempted a pass yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Go, go with what works. But it looks like the West has adjusted a little bit. It looks like they've added two or 
at least two in the box now at, at this time. I know they've added one. They're committed to stopping the run. Brings up third and four. Here he is, back to pass. Short pass to Grayson Cash. He's got it. This mixes, makes a man miss. That is not an easy catch on that fastball to him. It was just a three-yard stop. He was open. That is a big throw and catch for the That's Mounties. a great job by Dane seeing that window. Very small window he threw that in there. Mm -hmm. And great job. Good to see Cash back. My goodness. Need him to be out here, productive. He had that terrible knee injury over the summer. Accelerated his uh, uh, rehab. And here he is out here making plays. To the top side again is Cash Regan and Verser. Jenkins is next to Dane Williams. Verser's in motion. Come to the, this side. Looks like they're going to get the Jenkins. It's going to go wide. He's hit there on the right side, but gain of about two or three. Lance Stroud on the tackle. I like to see Jenkins uh, bounce it every now and then like that because it, it looks like they adjusted something, Coach, in the middle. Yeah. Or, you know, we just went right between the tackles. And so let's see what Coach Harbison comes up with here. Regan, fake, fake the jet sweep. Oh, brought down. Jenkins brought, brought down almost to the line of scrimmage. Zero gain on that play. Got to make it third and close to eight yards. Mm -hmm. And it would have been nice to get, it, get at least three or four on that to kind of mix your options up. All right, to the trips to the top side, maybe reverse her to the near side on his own. Got Cash, Regan, and Jansen Garner. He rolls that way, throws it to short. He didn't really get his shoulder square. Yeah. He's going to bring fourth down. Looks like Coach Harbison's looking to go for it. Dane has that uh, knee brace on that right knee, maybe just had a hard time pushing off of it or something. Like that. But it's also that wind is coming in his face and it's picked up a little bit. That, mm -hmm. that flag's moving a lot more than it was earlier mm -hmm. in the game. Brings Go. up a big play now. Fourth and uh, about seven. A long seven. Got two seconds left to go on the play clock. Dane's looking right. Rolling right. He's, he's not going to get away from Vince, and he throws it. Incomplete. That was not a very good uh, looking play there. I'm not sure what where the, where the breakdown was, but uh, the Mounties turned over on downs. He rolled out, and we didn't do a very good job of setting the edge for our quarterback on that sprint out there. He has one in his face almost immediately. Well, defense answered early on. Let's hope they can do it again. Mm -hmm. So they got Aiden Eikenberry out there, the cornerback, number 21. On the far side. Cam Cunningham over here to the near side. DJ Dar is a defensive tackle. Nesto Gonzalez. And We've got to be sure to communicate on our back end. We can't have a break in coverage as we did earlier. Gives it to the up back. Nash is the running back. And he gets to the second level so it gets about five yards maybe six tackled there by Isaac Chapman and Tyler Pinkerton but they're moving Kim Cunningham to the far side Aiden Eikenberry comes to the near side Nash is back there with Rice Rice looks like he's got pass. Looks like it's another screen. It's, it's not there. Up comes Corbin Norris to run him out of bounds. The Mounties have kind of figured out this screen game so far. They're looking for William Anderson coming across there, the wide receiver. You can almost see that the quarterback Nash is just trying to give ground and buy some time to, for it to develop a little bit more. Corbin did a good job of coming up and running him out of bounds. 
Secondary is doing a good job. We're on the same page. Mm -hmm. That's about the fourth or fifth time that well, they're going with a wildcat set here, Coach. But excuse me, I'm sorry about that. But looks like we've got Rice out there, the quarterback at the far side. Number one, Mason Hawkins is the quarterback right now. Trip to this side. They run the mesh. Oh, great job! Good play, Pinkerton. Tyler Pinkerton and Isaac Chapman. Loss of about a half a yard. Looked like they were trying to run the power read just then. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was so well defended, he didn't know what to do. So it looks like the uh, Mountains have held. And uh, West is going to punt it. You've got to be smart here. Yeah, that's this a prime opportunity for a fake. Yeah, and that's the quarterback back there. Also, Dane, I mean, excuse me, the um, Dalton Rice. Jeff Regan is back to return the kick. The wind is with West. It looks like it's a returnable kick. It's a clean catch. Bounces to the outside. The one cuts up, the, up there and hangs on to the ball. So return of about 10 yards out to the 23-yard line. So the man is going to take over to, on their own 23, I believe it is, with 429 left to go in the second quarter and a very fast first half. Man is leading seven to six. Well, what we haven't seen, we haven't seen much passing, but we haven't seen a deep shot out of the Monies yet. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised to see that this series. Yeah. But the running game has been so productive. It has been. Um, and it looks like the uh, West said we're we're gonna give you the passing game against the wind and maybe stop you from the the, the run for now. Well, we got a trip set, tight, tight bunch set to this side. Braxton, Lindsey, Cash, and they're going to give it to Jacob Jenkins. And, oh, my oh. goodness, we just missed that block right there. There was a miscommunication between the, the receivers about who was supposed to get number 29, and he just busted the whole thing up. I mean, I'm not sure how that he could get through there. That is a uh, miscommunication on the, on the blocking scheme. It's a loss of six yards. That's, 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 mm, that's tough. Now it's a second and 16. Going with the Braxton Lindsay and maybe reverse of this side. Give it to Braxton. Oh, I'm just. Everything's a little different tonight when, the, when it's a little colder, a little windier. It's just harder to throw the ball. Mm, stops the clock. 3.42 left to go in the quarter. Boy, it'd be nice to get the first down yeah. there and, and hang on to the ball, go score. Because yeah, we're going to get the ball back to start the second half. We deferred, so we should be getting the ball back. Be nice to go in with a, a, a little bit better lead. Hate to give him, hate to give him the ball back with three minutes and thirty seconds left to go in the half. <clears throat> Empty set for the Mounties. Looks like Versa, Regan, and Jansen on this side. He's looking oh, over here. Jeff, a little tunnel screen to himself, and the, the blocking's just not there. Block is not there. I mean, and the. There's a little confusion, I think, on, on with, with the wide receivers on who to block and, and who's supposed to block. And, and, and two times in that series that that um, the running back and receiver just didn't have a chance. Well, I think we're anticipating zone coverage there, and they went man. Is that what? They went man three across to the trip side away from the, the two receivers in the empty set, and it's difficult sometimes to run that tunnel screen against man coverage. Back to kick is JT Miller. Good snap. Get, get rid of it. Oh, it's low kick. Oh, it, oh, it looked like it. looked like it touched not. number one. Yeah. Had to get rid of it quick. The Wolverines came up the middle, and he was lucky to get it off. And the Wolverines are going to take over Mountie territory on the Mountie's 43-yard line. And they have plenty of time, 251 in the first half. Mm. Looks like uh, Payson Jones out there, left linebacker, and Isaac Chapman on the strong side. Tyler Pinkerton and Corbin Norris at linebacker. 
Wolverines shift to a level bunch set. It's two by two. They send Nash in motion. Well, inside out, reception. Rice looking to run. He's hit hard. Still a gain of about six yards. DJ Dar brings him down. Second and about less than five, about four. Let's see what the Wolverines have set here. Still the two by two set. Rice back there with NASA running back, looking to his right. A little out pattern. He doesn't see anything. He's Great job, defense. Yeah, he's a big kid, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Doesn't even go down. Don't. Don't oh, do yeah. it, Tyler. Uh, that is that every game we do this. That's very, very questionable. It is questionable. That's a very questionable call at this point in the game. And with two very good football teams, you hate for – we didn't throw them down. It was just a – I mean, that's a tough call. Yeah, because he didn't even really push him to the ground. No. Dalton Rice, is, uh, the quarterback, is 6'2", 210. Well, you got the quarterback who's still fighting. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm, that's tough. That is tough. Brings a, you know, that have been a long third down, and now they – you know, it's two, two big penalties the Mounties have had already to, to keep drives alive for the, the Wolverines. First and 10. On the 27-yard line looking right. In, up the middle. Passes long. Marcus Mounts on the coverage. And uh, pass was a little long. But Marcus had a really good job on defensive coverage there. Looks like Prayson Jones is checking out and Braxton Lindsay in on this defensive play. Looks like they're starting to take their shots more down here, Coach. Yeah, you got that combination they like with number 89, number two for the tunnel screen. I know they hadn't ran it mm -hmm. in, in a couple of series here, but that's the combination they like. Yeah, at the top of the screen. That little, the, the little stack set between two, which is Jackson Bruss and Anderson known as number 89. Well, they weren't quite ready. They're looking deep, looking for the fade. Going for Vincent. Oh, no, incomplete. The ball hit the ground. Cam Cunningham on the coverage. And it uh, really well thrown ball and def well defended also by our Cam Cunningham, number four, running step to step with him. He and did a great job of, of using that sideline as an extra defender. That's right. Call that squeezing. He did a great job of squeezing that receiver to the sideline. Mm -hmm. Third down. Minute 37 left to go in the half. Empty set. Braxton comes to this side. He's looking for that tunnel screen, tunnel screen, and, and deep. He's rolling left. Somebody's got to come up. Mm -hmm. Boy, he can run well. That, that has been the difference in the game so far. It's just ha what he's been able to do with his legs when stuff breaks down. He's been able to get a couple of yards here and there. He's a headsy quarterback. Mm -hmm. He doesn't waste a lot of time patting that ball, waiting for a receiver to come open. He does. If the receiver's not there, he's going to find four, and he's keeping the sticks moving. And he's an experienced quarterback too. He, I mean, he didn't start last year, but he was a. Uh, he got a lot of reps. So they get a new set of downs. One twenty-eight left to go in the half. West is driving. They're on the fifteen-yard line of the Mounties. Bring Anderson in, in motion. Take it to him. Oh, coming to Brust on the inside screen. Great Isaac job, Isaac Chapman. Chapman. Sniffed it out. Yeah, sure did. That's good coaching there. I don't know if you see how he broke down, made himself square. Yes. Didn't fall for any of the dancing. Broke down, wrapped up, drove his feet right, and waited for his teammates to get there. Coach Chapman Camp down here. The defensive backs coach is switching the defensive backs around, bringing Cam Cunningham to the near side. Jeff is at the far side. I think they like Cam to the wide side. He keeps flip-flopping him. And it's uh, 51 seconds now. Second and 11. Dalton Rice back there with Nash. 
He's looking down the middle. Oh, going for Jackson Brust, and it's overthrown. Andrew Trenary on the coverage. So well covered again by the Mounties. Going to bring up third and 11 from the 22-yard line. Oh, it's at the 16-yard line. Excuse me, 16. I said 22. And it looks like West is going to call timeout. Well, the Mounties have, uh, defense have been out there a long time, Coach. Yeah, and a lot of it's been self-inflicted. I hate to say it, but a couple of the drives we've kept alive by penalties. Mm -hmm. And, again, one, one was an obvious penalty, but the second one yeah, uh, was kind of questionable on my end from what I saw up here. That's right. You know, we've got to make sure we communicate on our back end. We've got to get enough pressure, but we also have to keep our eyes on the quarterbacks when he does break contain. We've got guys getting to the ball carry immediately. The last time he ran for the first down, all the secondary and linebackers were turned. Right. So we've got to keep our eyes on the quarterback because we know he's mobile and he can keep the chains moving. Mm -hmm. So we got third and 11. I wonder if they're going to try to have this be two down territory or if they'll settle for a field goal if they don't get her here on third down. Right. Yeah, they, I mean, it, it looked like this might be more of a high-scoring game. Both offenses scored in the first initial drives, and there have been a couple of stops here, but here's a, uh, you know, there's been s several big plays in this game. Here's just another big play. Yeah, absolutely. Two-by-two two stack set. Yep. 16-yard line. Oh, back there with uh, Nash. Back to pass. Got some pressure on him. Off to the sideline there. Oh, it's no, short. that ball hit the ground. No. That ball hit the ground. No, it hit the ground. Oh, the back judge. The back that judge ball called hit it. the ground. There yeah, we the, go. The side judge must have missed it, but back judge was still going <laughs> to. If I can see it from here, I don't know, I know. How, the, um, how the ref on the sideline didn't see it. Yeah, we're more than a football field away up here. Um, pass was short. Hit the ground. Looks like. The Wolverines are going to attempt an, a field goal. So it'll be about a 33-yarder if they do attempt a field goal. We can't get overzealous here and try to block a kick and do something extraordinary. We've got to play within ourselves and force them to make this field goal. T Timeout Wolverines. Coach looks to be upset about the last call. Oh, yeah. He's probably upset that the back judge, you know, came in late. But, you know, I'm not sure how the, si the side judge, who was right there, couldn't see that it hit the ground. Tell you what, this has been a heck of a ball game up to this point. Mm-hmm. West has done a good job of just playing keep away they have and I think you touched on earlier that the difference to this point has been the quarterback and his legs mm -hmm. it hasn't been as his, his arm as much right but what he's able to do with his legs once the play breaks down mm -hmm. Cole Edwards into hold for the Wolverines oh it's blocked, oh, it's blocked. Blocked by either Isaac Chapman or Andrew Trenere. I couldn't quite see. Both of them were there. The Mounted take over. 24 seconds left to go in the half. What a big play. And here we go. Let's see who got that block. Come around the left side. Oh, I think it's Chapman who busted through with a yes, defensive sir, tackle. Yes, it was Chapman. And you look at the, the kicker's rhythm was off. He kind of false started and he really didn't get his rhythm. And that right. allows Isaac to get back there and make a big play mm -hmm. on fourth down to keep them from taking the lead before going into half. That's right. Well, Mount has come out 
Looks like they're going to go under center. No, he's not. He's just calling the play. Got Jeff to the near side and Cash to the far side. They're going to give it to Jenkins. Looks like he uh, stutter steps up to about, gets about four or five. Just hold on to the ball. Yeah, looks like we're going to go into the – we're going to go into the half, or we got to call, call timeout. The clock has stopped. I'm not certain why. I want to say our defense has done a great job outside the oh. couple of penalties of the bin, but don't break mentality. Yeah, I didn't see it. It was on the far side. There was a holding mm. called by the side judge on the opposite side. It's what they call the makeup call. Yeah. He's trying to keep the coach happy over there on that sideline. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. They do get influenced, don't they? Or at least attempt to be influenced. Well, they're going to have those coaches in their ears all night. Guarantee yeah. you. Big well, the, game like this. That's right. That's right. Well, they're going to let the clock run out. Maddox do get the ball back in the second half on the, on the kick. And uh, keep in mind, the West leads this series 6-1. to one. This is their eighth meeting in a tight, tight ball game. The Mountain is going to have to come out with a something uh, a little bit different on the offensive side to uh, see if they can move the football. Um, we do have homecoming festivities. Mr. Zach Land, who's been our program engineer, who is our teacher and a broadcast uh, guru out here who, who is uh, running the program here. He's going to keep you guys, if you want to watch the program for the halftime show, we'll have a, wa a lot to, for you to see here. So please stay tuned for the halftime Festivities. We'll see you back here at second half. Qualified for this honor by excelling on the 2022 PSAT exam. Eli Anderson, Mason Burris, Benjamin Goldsby, and Nicholas Robinson. They will now compete for advancement to the National Merit Finalist level. Advancing to the finalist level, they will qualify them to compete for 36 million in scholarships through the National Merit Scholarship Program. Our first National Merit semifinalist Eli Anderson. Eli is the son of Jess and Missy Anderson. He plans to attend Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Dayton Beach, Florida and major in aeronautical science. Eli is a member of the Rogers Honors a Academy, Link Crew, Technology Students Association, and the Mountie Track Team. Teachers and coaches that have been the greatest impact on Eli are Coach Roller, Miss Susky, Mr. Springwater and Coach Anderson. Presenting Eli with his National Merit Semifinalist Recognition Certificate is RHS track coach Tony Roller. Eli states that Coach Roller has really pushed his desire to get involved with activities and to learn and grow. Thank you, Coach Roller. National Merit Semifinalist Eli Anderson. Our next National Merit Semifinalist, Mason Burris. Mason is the daughter of Angus Burris. Mason plans to attend the University of Arkansas and major in computer science with further plans to attend law school. Mason is a member of the Model UN Club and the Gardening Club. Teachers that have had the greatest impact on Mason are Ms. Susky, Ms. Anson, Ms. Cassidy, and Ms. Hager. Presenting Ms. Mason with her National Merit Semi-Finalist Recognition Certificate is Haas Hall teacher, Ms. Hager. Mason states that Ms. Hager always made class fun but kept us on track. Thank you, Ms. Hager. Congratulations to National Merit Semi-Finalist, Mason Burris. Our next na National Merit Semi-Finalist, Benjamin Goolsby. Ben is the son of James Goolsby and Amy Haas. He plans to attend the University of Arkansas and major in electrical engineering. Ben is a member of the Mountie Wrestling Team, Rogers Honor Academy, National Honor Society, and Fellowship of Christian Athletes. 
Teachers and coaches that have had the greatest impact on Ben are Kathy Susky, Tiffany Taylor, and Bob Lee. Presenting Ben with a National Merit Semifinalist Recognition Certificate is RHS teacher Kathy Susky. Ben states that Ms. Susky is never afraid to speak her voice. She brings humor and light to the classroom on the dullest of days. She teaches us not to just memorize the topics for our latest tests, but instead to truly think about the different solutions and paths to get there. She makes us better at math and better at life. Thank you, Ms. Susky. Congratulations to National Merit Semifinalist Benjamin Goolsby. Our final National Merit Semifinalist is Nicholas Robinson. Nick is the son of Scott and Amy Robinson. His top college choices include Rice, Georgia Tech, Duke, and Stanford. He plans to major in computer science. Nick is the president of Mu Alpha Theta and the Computer Science Club. He captains the tennis team and the quiz bowl team. He is also a member of the National Honor Society and Rogers Honor Academy. Teachers and coaches have had the greatest impact on him are Kathy Susky, Jeff Anderson, Matt Fulton, Marcus Board, and Gina Kell. Presenting Nick with the, the award tonight is RHS teacher Kathy Susky. Nick states, Miss Susky has helped challenge me in math and is an advocate in my continued learning. Thank you, Miss Susky. Congratulations to National Merit Semifinalist Nicholas Robinson. Thank you for congratulating all four of these semifinalists here tonight. Best wishes to all of you. Thank you. Next on the field is the Rogers Mountie golf team. The golf team is led by Coach Marcus Alexander, Coach Camden Myers, and Senior Maddox Stevens. This year's team started the season on fire, winning the Big Creek Invitational, a second place finish in the Red Dog Invitational, and a first place victory in the Fayetteville Bulldog Classic. The boys continued their dominance with a head-to-head -head victory over both Bentonville and Bentonville West, and also a first place finish in the Northwest Arkansas First Tee Confidence Classic. This week, the Mounties traveled to Cabot, Arkansas, winning both the 6A West Conference Championship by seven strokes and the state championship by six strokes. The Mounties starting lineup includes all-conference freshman Noah Regan, sophomore Clancy Hardin, all-conference, all-state junior Cohen Kennard qualifying for next week's state overall tournament, all-conference, all-state junior Jack Scudder, and all-conference, all-state senior Maddox Stevens. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2023 Arkansas 6A Golf State Champions. Welcome to the field, your Rogers Mountie cheerleaders.
And now please welcome to the field the Rogers High School Marching Mountaineer Band. Tonight, the RHS Marching Band will showcase their 2023 field show entitled Ascend. The RHS Mountaineer Band is under the direction of Robert Kane, assisted by George Vera, Patrice Brown, Nick Moore, Eric Aguilar, Jeremy Foster, Allison Weaver, and Yesenia Mata. Drum majors are Samantha John, Gavin Acosta, Deanna Fleming, and Amelia Spear. The band will travel to Bentonville High School tomorrow for their first competition of the season. They will take the field at 12.30 on Saturday. If you're available, they'd love to have you there to cheer them on.
tonight's home game sponsors. We'd like to thank them for being our sponsors tonight. First Community Bank and Sterling Bank of Rogers. Next, we'd also like to thank our contributors to pregame meals for the football team, football staff. Those include Matt Miller and family, Keyport Point Church, Cross Church, Jason Verser and family, Sidewalk Restaurant, First Baptist Church, Jared Green and family, Tyson Foods and Jeremy Garner, Bimbo Bakeries and James Hudgens, Al Kaufman and Belinda Davis. Thank you again for being sponsors for our football team for the pregame meals. Other scores of interest. At halftime, Springdale Harbor 21 over Springdale 3. Fayetteville 28-17 over Southside at halftime. Bentonville 28 over Rogers Heritage 0. Conway 21 to 0 in the second quarter. Hey, welcome back to Whitey Smith Stadium. The Mounties have a lead of seven to six in a uh, closely battled uh, first half. The Mounties uh, got outrushed by in that, or the Mounties outrushed 77-42 over the West. The total yards, though, the Mounties only have 84 yards in the first half to West 137. The passing yards, the Mounties have seven to West 95. And uh, the only touchdown for the Mounties are Jacob Jenkins, who has 13 carries for 60 yards. And I don't have the time of possession, Coach, but uh, you pointed this out. I'd, I'd like to see the West has, you know, definitely have earned the time of possession battle. Yeah, they have. And I think our defense has done a great job with the bend-no-break mentality. Mm -hmm. um, they found a way that second quarter to keep them out the end zone. And great job by blocking that kick going into the, 
halftime. Without a doubt. Here come the Mounties again uh, out for the second half. We've got about three minutes left before the kickoff. The Mounties do receive the kickoff. We do have some updates on some of the scores around the league right now in the 6A or just a, the 7A West, 6A is for. Uh, North Little Rock is over Little Rock Southwest 14 to 7. Fayetteville is leading Southside at halftime 28 17. Springdale Harbor leading at halftime over Springdale 21 to 3 in the Battle of Springdale. Bentonville is leading over Heritage 28 to 0 in the second quarter. Um, and Conway, the number one team ranked team in this state is leading Cabot 21 to zero. Hootens has Conway as the number one team in the state. Fayetteville ranked two, Bentonville three, Rogers four, and Bentonville West eight. We have the uh, tightest ball game here in the 7A tonight here at Whitey Smith Stadium. For that first uh, drive, the Mounties head coach uh, just drove it right down their throat and uh, thought that maybe we just uh, it's going to be a game where we just, when we stop them, we're just going to get the ball back, do the same thing over and over again. But somehow, um, West stiffened their neck and was able to stop some of the run plays. They were. They, they adjusted to our tight end set that we had. We had a tight end there. Sometimes we had double tights. Um, the other time we had a double tight trip set. I thought they did a great job adjusting to our, our offense formation schematically. What we can't do is have the penalties that we had mm -hmm. early on. Those two penalties that we had um, were costly, to say the least. Yeah. It gave uh, it was third and long on when uh, on the first drive of the game for West, and it gave them a third and manageable, and they were able to get the four yards for the first down to keep that drive alive because of the five yard penalty. And then we had them stopped again. We, it would have been third and very long, and then uh, we had a personal penalty foul, personal foul called against us, and that uh, kept their drive alive. And we we're fortunate to uh, block that field goal attempt. Absolutely. I think um, second half, we, t we touched on last week, we're through for almost 500 yards. Mm -hmm. And to only have seven passing yards to this point, <laughs> yes, um, I, I could see us airing out a little bit. There's some things we saw schematically we talked about at halftime. When we go our trip set, we're getting one-on-one -on -one coverage to the single receiver and the safety's cheated over to the trip side. Right. I wouldn't be surprised if we put somebody over there and take a shot to the end zone sometime soon here in the second half. I hear you. Now, the Rodgers, you know, they go to this trip set and, you know, because uh, West runs a zone back on the back end for their defensive backfield. And normally you, you would think they would get one on one opportunities on the on the on the backside. And just uh, we haven't had a chance to either throw it or 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 an opportunity for that. And we just even had it taken any chances on that just yet. Yeah, we've been playing pretty safe up to this point. But I think um, even as I walked around the second during halftime, you can tell that it's de definitely a playoff environment for some reason. The weather, um, there's a lot riding on this game for both teams in our conference. Um, well, this has uh, playoff seedings. Absolutely. You know, I mean, whether you host a game or you don't, or you go on the road for the first round, or if you want to be a first seed or a second seed, um, you can be a third seed and host, you be a four seed and go on the road. So, I mean, there is a lot of playoff implications and um, what's going on in these next uh, 24, 24 minutes. minutes. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and the coaches, our, our staff is tremendous. They do a great job of putting guys in a position to be successful. I think we're going to have to get the ball to number three. Um, maybe reverse it. Maybe reverse it. We're going to have to get the ball to him. I would like to see him um, at that single receiver away from trips when he gets the one-on-one -on -one coverage, mm -hmm. either a – a fade route, a comeback, but something to take advantage of his speed and his size against that defensive back that's that's responsible for covering him. Right. I'd like to get that senior involved. He was fired up to start the game, and and uh, and you got to get him going. At 6'2", 205, he is a force out there. And it uh, looks like the Wolverines are in that same set on the kickoff here. Looks like they're going to do that kind of pooch kick or kick it to about the 30-yard line so there's no – opportunity to return it and the ball goes off the tee so here we right, go here we it. go and it is that pooch kick back there is Jeff Regan he's got it and got a little bit of room 
Looks like he stumbled a little bit. Yeah. Couldn't find his footing. Yeah. And they, the the uh, crowd is looking for some extracurricular activity on the, on the west. Well, I can understand their frustration. Yeah, since they called it on us. They yeah. called it a little ticky tack following us early on. So I can understand the crowd's point of view here. We've got to sustain a drive here. Certainly do. If nothing else but to chew up some time off the clock. Right. But it'd be great to go on and, and put one in. And plus, we got the wind at the back here. So it looked like about a seven yard return on that kickoff. Wind at the back. There it is. We just talked about the trip set. Yeah, and maybe, maybe, maybe he's on the opposite end all by himself. Safety cheated over the trips. We got tight end trips. Wins with him. Give it a shot. We're going to give it to Jacob Jenkins. He's trying to feel his way through. I really would prefer Jacob to kind of just keep on going. Just, just start pushing that pile yourself. And uh, does gain about four yards. Can bring up six and a long, or second and a long six. They go with. Uh, Grayson Cash and Jeff Regan to the top side. Tight end sets again here with Verser and Jansen Garner as in his tight ends. We're bringing out to Grayson Cash. And it looks like he's going to be wrapped up there for a four-yard loss. And so uh, it's going to go back to now third and ten. So... Um, might have to look for that little bubble screen, two-man bubble screen. If Grayson makes him miss, he's probably going to get at least seven or eight yards on that. Yeah, I, I think his lateral movement is somewhat compromised with this, with the knee brace on. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm sure his health is much better than it was, but anytime you have that bulky brace on, it's going to make Limited. it tough to move yeah. laterally a little bit. Yeah. A little bunch set. Dane back to pass. Looks for a crossing routes. Can't – hold it. It is complete, but there's – flags all over the place in the backfield and looks like it I mean from what we can see up here coach it looks like it's gonna be holding yeah anytime you get those flags in the backfield there is more than likely holding on the Mounties here maybe reversal with a nice catch I mean Dane got that ball off he has a strong arm you see where he is limited a little bit in that mobility and you know and uh from where he was at the beginning of the season, boy, he could he could really run. Yeah. Third and twenty-one. This is the Mounties are going backwards on their first drive of the second half. Win with them. Mm. Tight end trips to the right, single receiver to the left. Dang back to pass, looking left. Going to J Jacob Jenkins, a little underthrown. And there, Coach Harbison is asking for a penalty flag. Jenkins went on a little bit of a wheel route. Ball was just slightly underthrown. I think if he able to get it out to him, then might have gotten that interference call. I think Jenkins got bumped on his way out on that wheel route, kind of threw off the timing of that whole play. Because mm -hmm. Dane did have time that time to, to throw. And so uh, it looks like another, a three and out for the Mounties. And put it away from their own. 21-yard line, back deep is Jackson Brust on a really good kick Gets over a good his head. Punt off. And looks like it's going to bounce a Mounties way. If That's they get a get great to it. punt. Flow down ball, flow down ball. Oh. Looks like it's going to reach into the end zone. Good effort by Caleb Hudgens hustling the whole way. Ball does go into the end zone. Nearly an 80-yard kick. Is that right? 79-yard punt. 79-yard punt. Yeah. <laughs> That'll help his average out a little bit. Yeah. You know, I know we're on defense. I, I wonder if we want to think about passing on first down just to kind of yeah. mix it up a little bit. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Do, do something a little bit different and because uh, cause they, they've adjusted and, they, and they're going to – Well, you know, they're going man-to-man. -man. They're putting more guys in the box. And they're putting more guys in the box. And then Bill West, their two-by-two two set. Mm-hmm. Looks like Rice is back there with running back Nash. Due to a little short screen to Vince, and he drops it. They're going for that uh, two-man screen over there to the really good uh, receiver, Arkansas State commit, Vincent. If he does catch that ball, Isaac Chapman's out there all over it. He's doing a great job of reading yeah, that. Yeah, Isaac was there. 
Second and 10 ball right on the 20 yard line. So it looks like they got a trip set to this side. Nash is back there with Rice. Hands it to Nash on the, looks like he's got a little bit of a crease. Brought down by Nestor Gonzalez. And it's going to bring up third and a long a six. A long six. Yep. And they're bringing that same set they had just a moment ago. This is that tunnel screen stuff they love to run. Bring, oh, there, oh, he read it well. He read it well. Get Good there, job. get there, get there. Bring him down. Good job. Okay. Let him Great go. Good job. <laughs> the whistle blew. Good job. Tyler Pinkerton. Good job, Pinkerton. Nessa Gonzalez. You can tell that, uh, you know, before the – you know, the Mounties looked like they were giving a zone and they were kind of backing off, giving to give that tunnel screen. And Andrew Trenieri came up just before the the snap of the ball and really sniffed that out. Where uh, they, if they ran that tunnel screen, he had to think he would have picked it off. He was all he was all over it. Great job reading that. Great job. Great defensive scheme by the coaches there. That's right. Start off one look, give them a pre-snap look, and then change the look right before the ball snapped. Looks like Jeff Regan is is back. Let's see if they Dalton Rice is the kick. It's going to be short kick because it's into the wind. And it does stop there at the, about the 42-yard line of the Mounties. So Mounties take over on their own 42-yard line. They're going to start this drive off a great field position. Yeah. Let's see if they take your adva uh, advice, Coach, and maybe decide to maybe throw it on the first down or try something a little bit different. Even the play action, we've been pretty predictable on first down with the run. I'd like to see us put that <clears throat> ball in the back's belly, get it out, and try to make a mm – -hmm attempt something downfield. We've got to do something to get these secondary and get these linebackers bailing. Right now, they're all mm -hmm. over the run. Mm -hmm. they, they got a three down lineman here. It looks like it. And, and they adjust Jeff out to outside. Jeff and Jansen, they do do the play action. And he's out, looks for Jeff. Over oh, the middle. Just, just overthrown. I think they're reading my mind up here. That's, yeah, that's, have, yeah, play action. That was a really good call, Coach. I liked it. And he was open. He was open, just a little high. Mm -hmm. You know, they played in such perfect conditions up until now that uh, obviously the, the wind affects that, just carried the ball a little bit further than Dane anticipated. Empty set, three receivers to the left hash. Cash and uh, Jenkins down to the, to the near side. Dane all alone, back to pass, looks left. He's got Jenkins. He's got Jenkins on the With cross. With plenty of room to run. Lots of room. Jenkins is making his way down the field, all the way down to the 16-yard line. Well-designed play there. Run run everybody off. It looked like they ran all nine routes, except for Jacob Jenkins, who ran a crossing route and was wide open and had plenty of room to run. Great play design there. And I don't think Jacob gives enough credit for his hands. He does a great job of catching the ball at the backfield. I was watching the game last week, and he took one to the house mm -hmm. on a very similar play right there. Trip to the near side. Maybe reversal to the top side. Rolling out this way is Dane. He's looking to his left. Oh, finds finds Jansen Garner, and he does catch it. Oh, oh. And there we go. Jansen was out of bounds. The wind was – whistle had blown, and uh, one of the – Defensive backs came up and hit Jansen well after the whistle. That's going to put the ball very close to the end zone. Yeah, it's going to be half half the distance because it was he was out about the 13 yard line, so it should put about the seven or the six and a half or so. Either way, it was kind of a a break for the Mounties. And you see, they made the adjustment already, coach. They've they've gone to the pass. They've gone back to the pass where where has been effective to for them all season. Dane Williams has 1,520 yards passing this season. 19 touchdowns. They go with a little bit of bunch set here. and Maybe reverse it in as a uh, wing back in a way. Oh, they're going to fake the pass, and Dane Williams up the middle, all the way down to the one-yard line. Looks like he's going to be short. Quarterback counter there to the left side. They flare Jacob Jenkins out, take some linebackers with them. And Dane does a great job of getting north and south. I want to say if his knee wouldn't compromise, that'd be a touchdown. I agree. That was a really good play there. Now that we've softened him up a little bit, some of the passing, 
Let's see if we just go. Jacob Jenkins over the right tackle. We're going to go off the right tackle, and he's not going to get in. That was second down. It can be third down. Got to do something, maybe a little quick hitter because number 89 came around the edge there and uh, did a good job of, of getting to Jacob before he could get to this, into the, uh, the line of scrimmage. William Anderson, yeah, he's a receiver. He's going both ways. Too. The ball being so close, I wouldn't be surprised to see a quarterback sneak if he's back on the center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe reverser here, flanker. Jacob Jenkins over to the left. Another fake, same play as before. Touchdown. Yeah, they do call it. Touchdown, Mounties. Little fake screen, and Dane Williams puts his foot in the ground and gets the touchdown. Again, maybe Versa with the lead block there. Great job by him. Anytime you get a receiver that had the game he had last week, you expect he over there whining and crying for the ball. He's not. He's doing a great job of lead blocking and being a great teammate. Mm -hmm. That's a good drive there. Mounties go about 44 yards for the touchdown. JT Miller set to uh, kick. Grayson Cash hold. Marcus Mounts is the deep snapper. Kick is, Kick is good. good. So that makes it an eight-point lead for the Mounties. Mounties leading 14-6 to six with 7.08 left to go in the third quarter. That was a great job by the coaching staff there. Again, airing out a little bit, a little play action, getting your running back involved in your passing game. Mm -hmm. Great scheme, great play calling. Yeah, sometimes when you – when something was so easy, like the first drive, like, oh, well, well heck, we can just do that all, yeah. all game. But, you know, the, the other team has good coaching and good players as well. And they're going to make an adjustment. So th that's that's all part of the, the the coaching, the way it all comes about. you gotta got to scheme up and you got to adjust. Yeah. Here we go. Got a replay on the touchdown here. He fakes the little screen pass, pulls that number 23 out a little bit, Vince, and, and uh, just puts his foot in the ground. And I like going north and south too. That flare route by Jenkins did just enough of taking those linebackers' eyes to right. open up that crease for Dane. Right. Big play on that drive, right? You're right, Coach, is that, that Jacob Jenkins on 25-yard pass completion. JT Miller set to kick it. Vincent looks like Vincent and is back deep. Kick should be in the end zone, and it is. JT doing his job there. So the Wolverines will take over on their own 20-yard line. Goes the Mountie defense. I see Braxton Lindsay out there on defense, which is good. He's a big athletic kid that can play a number of positions for us out there on offense or defense. Mm -hmm. well, the defensive line looks like Nesto Gonzalez and Alan Perez, along with DJ Dara on the defensive line. Aiden Eikenberry here to the near side, number 21, defensive back. Alan Perez, he's a converted offensive lineman. He yeah. was offensive lineman earlier on in the season. That's right. I like his size there at that nose guard. Mm -hmm. Looks like they're going a trip set to the to the top side. Back to pass. He's looking right. Goes for the short man. It's That's hit the ground. Surely, yes, it is. It's incomplete. So the nose of the ball, it's just when it goes into the wind like that, it just starts to dive. Yeah. And, and – uh, Things that were normally easy passes last week are not easy tonight. No, you've got to earn anything. You got to earn everything you get tonight, whether it be a stout defense to weather conditions. So second and ten, ball the twenty yard line. Rice back to pass, looking left again over to Vincent. Breaks down there. Good oh, tackle. Good tackle by Cam Cunningham. See how he broke down there. He did. Waited for his uh, help, and Isaac Chapman came to clean the play up. We talked about it earlier multiple hats to the ball. Yeah. That's a gain of five yards, maybe six. So that does bring up, yeah, six yards. So third and four. Regan comes in back at corner. It's big down here for the Mountie defense. Mm -hmm. Got press coverage by Jeff Regan. Down here in the single receiver, he backs up a little bit. Looks like we're bringing Pinkerton into the B gap. He drops. We'll drop them all. Short pass. Oh, oh, what a tackle. Really good tackle by Braxton. Jackson Bruss on the catch. What a tough individual. 
Mm. But a first down completion. And the chains do move. So it's first down and on their own 31-yard line. Really good open field tackle by Braxton. So they get a new set of downs, and uh, it looks like they're going to the twin set, two by two, a little bit, bringing it in a little tighter. Bringing number one in motion. It looks like they're going to bring him on a wheel route. They're looking him on, and it, Dalton Rice is looking to pass. And he's running it now. Aiden Eikenberry runs him out of bounds. Good good hit, Aiden. Good job. Early on in the first half, that DB's head was turned mm -hmm. and now allowed the quarterback to gain about five, six, seven more yards. Great adjustment by the coaches to talk about that at the half and that not to happen this time around. Mm -hmm. That quarterback's a load. Yeah, he is. Did a good job Aiden Eikenberry did there of running him out of bounds. His sophomore. Looks like they got Braxton Lindsay lined up at outside linebacker now. Mm -hmm, to the near side here. Going to give it to the up back. And Nash is wrapped up. Nestor nice. Gonzalez, Braxton Lindsay there. Gain him no yards, maybe loss of play. Going to have third and close to eight yards. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be third and seven. Another big play. Our staff really does a great job with situational substitutions. Mm -hmm. You got guys going both ways, but then here comes Brust. They get, no, they fake the jet sweep going on the tunnel screen to Vincent. DJ Dar is there, there. Get there, get there. Oh, they do tackle him. They tackle me short of the first. Yep. Kim Cunningham looked like he's going to come off. He's Man. short. They got him. Great job by DJ redirecting as a defensive lineman and yeah. being able to get, get in there and make that tough for number 23, the Arkansas State commit. And Dara did a great job. Looks like they're, oh, fourth and fourth. They're going to try to draw him off. Don't, don't. don't do <laughs> Sorry. It. No. Come on, Braxton. Be smart out there. Be smart. Let's see if he. There's Dalton. He is the punter, too. He made quick kick it. No, they're going for it. Off to the sideline. Incomplete. In, incompleted. Turnover incomplete on downs. Incomplete. Turnover on downs. That's a great defensive stand by the Rodgers Mounties on fourth down. That is fantastic. Mounties are going to take over on the that's west 38-yard <laughs> line. That's a gutsy call by the Bentonville West coaching staff sure right is. there. It sure is. I thought they were going to try to draw him off one more time and call a timeout and get a punt. Yeah. Um. Or I, th I thought Dalton Rice was just going to back up and do a quick kick and maybe kick it, you know, 20, 30 yards and, and call it a day. But you know those saying, scared money don't make money. <laughs> That's right. And the, here come the Mounties. In the 38-yard line, their own 38-yard line. It's, once again, let's see if they open up the playbook and, and get some passing in and again. That West is adjusting. Gaines looking to this side. Oh, Braxton Lindsay wide Braxton open. Braxton Lindsay right across the middle. He's wide open. He's going to keep his feet. The ball was on the money. Jeff Regan ran an inside. He's an inside receiver, ran long, and took the safety with him because they're going man coverage out there. Braxton cut to the middle, was wide open. They cleared it out for him. Yep, and, and Dane just put it right on him. That's the same route they ran with Jacob Jenkins early in the, earlier, but they just ran it with a little bit more depth with Braxton Lindsay here. That's right. So here they go with the two-by-two two set. Jacob Jenkins next to Dane Williams. They get it to Jacob. Oh, the around the left corner. Around the left corner. They are going to call holding on mm. that. Yeah, it did look like he held him a little bit too long there. I think they're going to get Connor Zimmerman on that play. The defensive end tried to turn his shoulder, and he, he just wasn't going to let him go. Yeah, anytime Dane has time to set his feet. Mm-hmm. He has a very accurate arm, oh a very goodness, strong yeah. arm when he has time to set his feet. And here's a, here's a replay on that. You see Jeff is the inside receiver, and he runs him off, runs that safety off, and he goes safety goes with him, and, and Braxton cuts to the middle, and he's wide open. And Dane puts a number on him right there, and so terrific throw and catch. It's a good open field tackle there by Bentonville West. That kid doesn't make that tackle. Yeah. We've got six more points on the board. Yeah. Now it's going to bring up first and 20. 
Got a trip set to this side. Maybe reverse it to the top side. Dana's looking right. Steps up. He finds a little bit of room here. Oh, keeps his feet. Mm. Oh, good tackle by 89 Anderson. Dane does get about five yards. Ball's going to be placed on the left hash. Again, I'm still waiting for us to take advantage of the one-on-one -on -one coverage away from trips. Mm -hmm. It looks like they're going to go with the trips again on this side. Second and 16. Got Cash, Regan, and Vers uh, Jansen on this side. Maybe reverse it to the top side. Dane. Oh, my mm. goodness. Throws it with his left hand. That was a good job by him just getting rid of the ball and not taking a loss of yards there. Oh, we've got some little the ball, the whistle's been blown. Been blown for some time now. I'm yeah, wondering I'm why sure. we have a flag there. Yeah, I'm wondering why they're going after the ball. There's a flag down the, over there. I think they might be calling intentional grounding. So boy, and that, that if that happens then the, these two big penalties again. Intentional grounding, yep. Loss it down as well. So we're going to have third and 16. Well, third and forever. Yeah. Paul's on the. Huh. We don't need to get it all back. We need to make a play line. and get the ball in field goal range. range. Yeah. That's yeah. got to be our objective right here. Yeah. Yeah, because JT has the plenty leg and the wind is with him. Absolutely. So, Coach Harbison's calling the, calling the plays right now. Signaling them in. We've got 10 seconds left to go on the play clock. you got time, boys. They are going to go empty set. And they're going uh, man coverage underneath. and He's going to go deep. Going to go to Jeff. Oh. oh. Ball just carried a little bit too long. And uh, it's a pretty well-thrown ball, but I think uh, – with this win, the ball just carried those three or four yards. It just hung up in the air a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's a disappointing drive, to be honest with you, Coach. All the way down to the, about the 12-yard line, and now we're back at the 33. And it looks like we are going to attempt a field goal at the 39-yard. That's going to be a 49-yard field goal attempt here by J.T. Miller. In comes Jacob uh, Jenkins into block. At the corner, got five seconds left to go in the play. Ball snap, kick. Good. It's good. 49-yard field goal by J.T. Miller. Maybe that's what we were setting up, Coach. Lose yards, lose yards, so we get a 49-yard <laughs> field goal. <laughs> hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. Man, I don't know what the school record is. Any way to look that up real quick, Tommy? You know what it is? Okay, look up the school record field goal. If you don't mind. But smart Our by the coaches. Statistician Tommy, Tommy. Tommy's here. Tommy Kendall. Kendall, yep. Well, good job getting something out of that drive. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That would have been very disappointing had we gotten zero points out of that. And uh, we got the – just clears the upright by about eight yards, maybe ten yards. Good poise by their field goal team as well. The clock's winding down. Mm -hmm. There was no pressure. So that's, that's good poise. That's good coaching as well. Anytime you guys can lock in mentally and make something out of nothing, as they say. Yeah. And, you know, and Jacob Jenkins is running on the field because, you know, he's, he's playing offense. He's running receive routes. He's playing defense. And then special teams, he's out there as well. And sometimes, you know, we get a little confused as well, you know, when you're playing that many positions. JT Miller set the kick. We connected on this one. That one's deep in the end zone. So the – He almost the, made that field goal. Yeah, that's right. West takes over at their 20-yard line with 2.48 left to go in the third quarter, 17-6. to six. Outside of their opening drive, we've done a very good job of containing them, rallying to the ball, contesting every pass that they make, and also putting good pressure on the quarterback. And we've almost stopped their running game completely with the exception of their, running, of their quarterback running on broken plays. That's right.
The Mountains have a defensive backfield, Aiden Eikenberry, Cam Cunningham, Aiden, Andrew Trenary, and Marcus Mounts. Looks like uh, Payson Jones is out there at outside linebacker. Along with Isaac Chapman. Rice is back. To, looks like he's going to hand it off to Nash, and there's oh, – Mm. Corbin Norris was there. He was he just, there. He just break down a little bit. He needs, to, he needs to take a little flatter angle there when he sees the handoff. Uh, his aggressiveness, I love though. See how fast he gets back there. He's a downhill linebacker. Yeah, he certainly is. We used to call it playing the triangle. The triangle's from where you are, middle linebacker, to those tackles or tight ends. Mm -hmm. And he does a great job of filling those holes and stuff from the run. So it brings up second and about eight. Well, they're going to do a trips bunch set to the top. They're going to have to hustle. They're down to four on the play clock. They do just get it off. They're looking for that tunnel screen again. Mounty sniffed oh, it out. Oh, wrap up. Ball's on the ground. The ball's still loose. The ball's still loose. I think the Mounties may have ha got it. Oh, it looks like they're yeah, saying West has it. Yep. Jackson Brust had it, but uh, the Mounties sniffed that out really well. They're ready for this tunnel screen uh, game that the West is bringing tonight. And it starts with the defensive line being able to redirect, mm -hmm. feel the soft pressure by the offensive line. Right. And get lateral, find a way to get down the line to the ball. And that fumble d is fumbled forward and recovered by the Wolverines, so they do get a first down on the 30-yard line just by the tip of the nose of the ball. Boy, that would have been a nice break for the Mounties. Got about a minute, 30 seconds left in this third quarter. So the trip set to the near side. Vincent to the top side. They're going to give it to Nash. Oh, oh ball's on the ground again. This oh. time the Mounties recover. They do recover it this time. Look like Payson Jones stripped it. Great job by number 22, Payson Jones. Got it in there and stripped the ball out. Tyler Pinkerton with the fumble recovery. And the Mounties will take over at their own 30, 28-yard uh, line. Excuse me. That's the break they're looking for, Coach. Yeah, that's what we needed. You know, the first one got away from us, and we recovered this second one. Great job. Great penetration here. And so – so Harbison, Coach Bray, and Coach Brill down there calling up a play. They're going to go empty set. Got Jansen Garner, Regan, and Cash to the near side. Jenkins and maybe Versa to the top side. He's looking down the middle. He's getting flushed out. Throws it across Don't his body to the middle. Don't do that. My goodness. Boy, he dodged a bullet there. Um, I think it was intended for Jeff, but uh, – he had two wide open receivers to the top of the screen. I don't know if they were decoys. He he, he was he was looking middle the whole time. I, I think he must have had said that we're going here, but I agree that he had some – looks like it might have been an open receiver. Jacob Jenkins or Mabry were open on the top side. Yeah, I think now's a good time to go back to that running game. Mm -hmm. Eat up some of this clock. We've got a short field. Maybe set up a play action later on in your downs. Mm -hmm. So they're going with the twin – Twin set to both sides. Jacob Jenkins. They do give it to him again. That's a good call. Get in there. Pulls it up. Oh, missed a block there. But brings up, uh, going to bring third and seven. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, it was a good, good time to go to that run play. So it brings up third and seven. Trips to the far side. Looks like almost a bunch set. See what they go go with here. Quick throw it over to Jeff. Oh my goodness! You got to catch the ball first before we can run with it. Incomplete. Brings up fourth down, and out comes the putting unit again. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, the field goal unit. And this one is going to be a. Looks like he sets it on the – Grayson Cass going to set it down there on the 33, so a 43-yard field goal attempt. Of course, we'd like to get a touchdown after that turnover on a short field, but nonetheless, we will take three. 
Yeah, and if we can get set, snap is down, kick is up, and it looks like it might be wide this time. It is wide. Wide right. It is wide right. That is a tough series for the Mounties. Looks like West is coming with a delayed blitz of some sort to flush Dane out of the pocket. On that last one of the on the, on the second down play that we we didn't get, but I, I did like that screen set bunch set that they threw to Jeff. If Jeff catches that ball, I think he's got some room to move. So you got those two big wide receivers out there to block for him. Yeah, they're biggest tight ends in the, in, yeah. the, in a lot of the leagues. So the ball is placed at the 20 yard line for West. 34 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Oh, the little tunnel screen again. Oh, all hit over hard. It. That Pinkerton on the tackle there. It is. DJ Dara was out there to kind of redirect him too. That's Vincent on the catch. DJ Dara has done a great job reading that screen. Mm -hmm. He's an Elmwood product. Really good kid. Senior out here. Second and ten. No gain on the play. Twin sets to both sides. They're looking to pass again. Looking at got all day. Going to rush him now. Throws across his body. Wrap complete. Up. And it's brought down by Braxton Lindsay. Complete to Braden Nash, the, the uh, running back who was looks like he's trying to run a wheel route. And came back to the quarterback when he was in trouble. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter with the Mounties leading 17 to six. Anything you see in that third quarter, Coach? Well, we've got to take advantage of those turnovers. And we've got to find a way to turn those into touchdowns as opposed to field goals. Defensively, offensively, I think it's a good time. Fourth quarter up by two scores. Again, let's get back to that running game a little bit and set up some play action. No doubt. I'd like to invite everybody out here next Thursday night for – the Elmwood Raiders versus Ramsey, the Fayetteville feeder team. And uh, I believe Ramsey is out of Fort Smith. Ramey is the team oh, out of you're Fayetteville. Right. You're right. Thank you for the correction. Ramsey is the Fort Smith team. You're right. And uh, here, uh, seventh grade kicks off at 530, eighth grade, 630. So come on out, watch your undefeated Elmwood Raiders and uh, take them both on. And uh, the seventh grade team is five and one. Eighth grade team is six and zero, oh, and looking strong as ever. So, it's a quality group coming up through uh, Elmwood. So, Thursday night at six thirty is an eighth grade game. Five thirty is the sixth grade, a uh, seventh grade game. And these high school coaches are super excited about those those two, two teams coming two up. Classes, Absolutely. Okay, so here comes West. Or with trips to the top side is third and about six, a long six, bringing Br Jackson Bruss in motion. Uh, he gets it. Woo! Oh, he disconnected from the ball by Jeff Regan. That's a great play by Jeff Regan. I mean, he was there before the ball was. He did a great job of reading that. Yeah. Once the ball came out the quarterback's hand, he put his foot in the ground and got downhill. Yeah. He uh, he uh, he must have done some film study. He must have known that play was coming, and uh, got that ball away from Jackson Brust, who's one of their best receivers. Always been. He is a an all conference type of player. Jackson Bruss has six touchdown passes, receptions on the season. And for the Mounties to hold him to nothing tonight is pretty good. And then again, we talked about the situational substitutions. If you notice, Reagan well, hadn't been in there until third down. Yeah. The kick, and looks like Jeff's going to have room to return this. Shucks and jives a little bit, but he tries to make a couple of guys miss. Does get the ball up to the Mountie 43 yard line or 42 yard line. Prevents it from hitting the ground and then going all the way back to the 10-yard line where, you know, with this win, that ball could easily go back that far. Well, he did a great job of just catching and not letting it bounce and yeah. put us in the bad field position. Forty-six yard line. Looks like we're back to the two tight end set. Looks like we're a receiver short. Yep. There goes Braxton back out there. You got time. You got time, guys. We've got 10 seconds left to go on the play clock. Gives it Jenkins. Jenkins hits it hard this time. I like that one. 
Wheeler made up his mind and put his head down and snuck it through there. Gained about four yards. Brings up going to be second and six. Diego Dillette on that left side, and along with Connor Zimmerman doing a really good job tonight. Another four-yard gain. He double tights, tight end trips to the bottom of the screen. It goes to Jacob Jenkins again off that left side. Looks like again about three. And uh, kind of a short spot there, but we're going to bring third and, and a long four. So the Mounties are going against a win now in the fourth quarter, going heading south to north. Got Cash and Regan on this side. Maybe and Jansen as tight ends. Rolling to this way. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. oh, my goodness. Just not a lot of room for that play to the boundary. I think you missed someone running downfield. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, and it's tough to kind of throw against your body like that because – I think we had a wide receiver uh, going down the hash who may have been open. But uh, got to throw that ball probably a little sooner maybe. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's unfortunate. Now that this keeps this um, game close, and now it's in jeopardy here, 17-6. to six. We, You know, uh, West has the ball. 10.30 left to go in the ball game. Mattis have to come up with a stop again. Looks like they got the twins, twin set again. He's looking, Dalton Rice looking left for the corner route. Tyler Pinkerton chasing down. Nesta Gonzalez is there as well. Oh, he's out. He of the had no of receiver in the in the area. But you see, uh, Jackson Bruss is super smart receiver. He comes up. I'm here. Put his hand up. Puts his hand up. I'm yeah. here. Look at me. I'm here. There comes experience in the play. It is. It. I mean, that's exactly right. You see Nesto Gonzalez running them down along with Tyler Pinkerton. Look at that defensive lineman. They've got no quit in them. No. Those guys are hustling. They're playing their tails off tonight. Defense has done a wonderful job after giving up 47 points last week to Fayetteville and 38 points to the south side the week previous. Back to pass again. He's looking left. And That's oh, a hold. And the pace and Good Jones job, pace and collapse Jones. on those. And the, the ball's ball. on the ground. Oh, they're going to call him down. They're going to rule him down. Payson Jones and I think DJ Darrow met the quarterback in the backfield. Oh, my goodness, what a sack. About a 12-yard loss. Payson Jones doing He a was being held on that play. Yes. And he kept fighting to get to that quarterback. That's a great effort. Having a fantastic game, the senior. Payson Jones, number 22. Now it looks like more of a passing down, so they're bringing Braxton Lindsay and uh, Payson Jones a break. They're bringing Braxton Lindsay, also Jeff Regan here in third down. Again, situational substitutions have been huge for the Mounties. Mm -hmm. Back to pass is Dalton Rice. Looking for that. He's going long. Oh, he's got a man open. Oh, he catches it over. Over Marcus Mounts. Yes. Cam Cunningham was there as well, but he just went ahead and got it. Well, that was a pretty good catch, throwing catch there for the West Wolverines. Mounts was there. He just mis he just misjudged the ball. Mm -hmm. He was there. He was in perfect position to make a play. Mm -hmm. Got to make the play. So the Wolverines take over. They're on the about the 16-yard line. Here comes uh, Tyler Pinkerton. They're pulling it. There's that mesh play. Oh, good play by Braxton. Pinkerton chased him out of there. And Braxton lives in there waiting to clean him up. Yeah. That was Mason Hawkins kind of running the, you know, the what they call the wildcat. As a wide receiver comes in every now and then and just give a different look. And back to the Dalton Rice at quarterback, along with Braden Nash. One with a twin set to both sides. 
Ball to the near hash. Rice is looking to the right side, looking for, oh, 23. Oh, throws it to the end zone. Mm. It's out of – good job by – who was that? Tyler Pinkerton and uh, Braxton Lindsay on the on the rush. It's a great job of getting pressure on the quarterback and great job by the secondary of staying with their men. Mm -hmm. Third and about six. Most likely four down territory regardless for West. Looks like they're going to go the trips to the far side. Ball on the right hash. Vincent, the Arkansas State commit to the near side. Kim Cunningham is on him. Looking left is Rice with the short pass. Oh, he caught it. Oh, he's down at the one yard That's line. The one yard line. Yeah, that was uh, Mason Hawkins on the slant. The inside, both inside receivers went on the out route. The in, outside receiver went on the slant. They were able to sneak it in there. On the one yard line, they give it to the. Oh, he keeps it. Great well, Dalton Rice kept the ball, and he was smothered by Isaac, Isaac Chapman, Chapman and Braxton Lindsay both. It's a loss of about three or four yards. Mm -hmm. And the clock keeps ticking, too. Second and goal. Look how open yeah, the middle is. Tunnel to 23. 23 or, or something to 23 over, over the, right over the middle. And it goes. Good job, defense. Knocked down. DJ Dara. DJ Dara, good job again. And it looked like they were doing the same thing and where they were kind of doing it. The, the receivers are kind of running an out route and an in route too. The outside receiver running in trying to get almost a rub route going. Absolutely. So it's going to bring third and goal from about the four-yard line. Brings uh, Vincent in motion. Goes all the way across. Now he's looking to him. Rice is back to pass. Oh, it's, oh, it gets to him again. Isaac Chapman is there to knock him off his feet. The ball goes harmlessly to the ground. Now it's going to bring fourth down. It looks like they're going to settle for the field goal. Again, another good job by defense. Ben but don't break mentality. Yeah, their coach, Brian Pratt, is upset. I'm not sure who he's upset at. He's like, maybe he's talking to the quarterback like he's open. Go get it to him. In to attempt a field goal. What number do you see there, coach? I can't quite see his number. Number 15. Number 15. 15. Okay, that's Jake. No, that's not Jake Casey. Oh, it's low. Oh. No. It's a bullet. Oh, my goodness. He snuck it through there. He did. Just over the upright inside the oh, inside the upright and over the crossbar. And we'll bring it to 17 to 9. But that was a really good stand by the Mounties. I mean, that was first and goal at the one yard line or the half yard line. And the Mounties with two awesome uh, stops there. Defensive line and outside linebackers did a tremendous job there, batting down passes, getting down, getting penetration on the quarterback. Great job by the front five. And keep in mind, they're they're moving Braxton Lindsay all over the place. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's playing outside linebacker, corner, receiver. Receiver, yeah. He's doing an awesome job. I love our footage, our camera on the sideline here. Again, that's Zach Land, our engineer, teacher from broadcast teacher at Rogers High School. Got a lot of these uh, kids out here that's a student body with the cameras doing a wonderful job tonight. Oh, the student body is excited about the telecast. So is the community as a whole, and so are those watching abroad. Yeah. I had a chance to watch last week. You know, I told you we had a doubleheader baseball game, so I was watching yeah. baseball with one eye and the Fayetteville game with the other eye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it does look like the Mounties are trying to set – look like they're – Maybe prepared for an onside kick. Got the hands guy out. Jansen Garner is out there. Along with Braxton. Ty, Ty Chandler. They're going to kick it deep. We have a chance for a return. 
Oh, it does right, take him into the end, the end zone. zone. Takes Cam into the end zone. Well, it'll be a touchback. The Mountains do take over. 7-11 left in the fourth quarter. Boy. Mm. We've got to take care of the ball here. We sure do. And uh, get Maybe. a sustained drive. Yeah. Get, a, get several first downs. He said it. So if they do get the ball back, there's not a lot of time left in their pressing. Right. So it looks like the Mountains are going to go with the trip set to the near side. It looks like Verser, Regan, and Cash. Tied into the top, Jackson Garner. Mm -hmm. They bring Verser in motion. Going to give it to Jenkins. With the Verser leading up the, up the middle there. So it looks like it's going to be a gain of about four yards. Well, Verser's big enough as a, as a tight end. He played college. I think he's got... Going to UCA next year, Coach, to play football. Maybe Verser. Yeah, he's going to eat himself into a tight end. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's a big kid. He's, he's, he's all of 6'4". He's a heck of a 400-meter um, runner as well. A bunch set to the top side. Oh, oh, he's rolling to his right. Oh, he's looking deep. Looking for Grayson Cash. He adjusts to the ball. Intercept, I'm surprised that's not past. He's down. He's down. Now he they thought the ball was on the ground, and we just stopped. It looks like he's going to take it to the end zone. Are they, are they not going to call that an incomplete pass? What a change of events right here. They ruled it an interception somehow. Well, even if it is an interception, he was on the ground. I thought he was on the ground. He I was thought on they were the both ground. on the ground. This is not the NFL. They were if it is an interception, that ball should be down. Uh, I would like to see a replay of that. Yeah. But um, boy, what a that ball was thrown up in the air, and Grayson was trying to make a play to the ball coming back to it. Ball just got batted in the air, and I think the defensive back must have come up with it. And it, and, it, and it looked like it was on the ground. So I think the majority of the R Rogers Mountaineers, they just stopped. So they are going to rule it a touchdown. And uh, West comes back out with. They're going to go for two. For to two. Up. Yeah, for two. What a turn of events right there on that play. I wish we had a red flag down there. <laughs> I, I re rewound our, my video I'm watching here. Ball, ball bounced off Jackson Bruss backside and uh, looks like the defensive back did recover it while he was in standing up. Boy. So they're going to go, looks like, delay of game, delay of game against West. So, but I guess um, if they're going to pass it in, it doesn't probably hurt them. It gives them a little bit more space to move. So a five-yard penalty is going to move the ball back to the eight-yard line for this two-point conversion. A uh, very, very important two-point conversion. The score is 17 to 17-15 with 16-15 left to go in the game. So they're going to the bunch set to the top side is West. They bring him in motion. Stops and goes back. Don't, goes to the, the near side, and it's good. Vincent for the two-point conversion, it's good. we got a tie ball game. We sure do. We've had uh, two interceptions the last two possessions. Makes it difficult. And this is a game that, that the Mounties look like they should be handling for all intents and purposes. We had all the momentum, as you said, the first pick. Set them up. I believe they got a field goal. Mm -hmm. Coach well, Harbison's completing his case down there with the back judge. What we have to do, coaches and 
players alike, we got to forget about it. There's no way we can do to go back and change that. We have to focus all our energy on the right now. Yeah. It's kind of like a bad golf shot, right? Yeah. yeah you yeah. got to forget about it. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that's the craziest play I've seen at any level up to this point. Yeah, it, it, it certainly is. You know, and Grayson was just trying to make a play and almost came up with it. As it was going down the ground, it got stripped. And uh, and all the Mounties uh, just kind of stood around and watched, kind of watched him uh, return that kick. So but it, they're going to go again with uh, Cam Cunningham deep, Braxton Lindsay, and Jeff Regan also there. I wonder if he's going to try to kick it deep or uh, do that pooch kick. And there's a kick, and it is deep. And it's into the end zone. Or it'll be a touchback. So the Mounties do take over. And uh, it'll be 17 all with 6-10 left to go in the game. Let's see what uh, Coach Harbison has dialed up. We've got to sustain a good drive here. Yeah, we talked about that last time. We said let's sustain the drive. Let's keep getting first downs and, you know, um, the ball up for grabs on the, going against the wind like that. It's, it's, it's tough. It's tough in, in double coverage. Looks like the wind has died down a little bit. Yeah. Trips to, this, to the near side. Oh, my goodness. It's incomplete. And it, uh, it, it looks like the, it still will bring up second and 10 from the 20-yard line. So it uh, looks like the Miners are going to go the same set, which is the trips to the near side. Well, let's see what Coach Harbinson has, has called up. Yep, Grayson Cash uh, to the far side. Garner, Regan, and Verser to the near. Jenkins. Back with he's back to pass again. Jenkins on the wheel route. He has Jenkins on the wheel route. We got Jeff in the middle. Jeff, oh, oh catch oh. the ball. Catch the ball. We might win the game. Let's go. He had Riggin across the middle. He also had My Jacob goodness. Jenkins running down the right sideline. Wow. We just got to lock in mentally here. We sure do. Somebody's got to make a play. I mean, that, that's the play. You, you, you catch that, you most likely win the ball game because I think he's going he's gonna to go a little bit further than, than just that spot where he catches it. Exactly. It gives a little momentum, a little confidence. I'm going with an empty set now. Oh. Looking up the middle, he steps up. He's got, oh, Jansen. Oh, overthrows. Jansen. Overthrows Jansen. They're not going to. Oh. Boy, incomplete. And a fourth down coming up you know, with uh, 5.53 left to go in the game. My goodness. Well, you'd expect nothing less out of these two teams. Right. So uh, JT Miller back to kick. Here they come. Gets it off. Ball's on the ground. Jackson Bruss is back there. The ball goes, and the mount is down it. It's a and great job by JT getting that kickoff. Yeah, they uh, they do a good job, West does, of uh, attacking that punter. Well, if you notice, they're shifting right before the snap. Mm -hmm. And when they shift, they're overloading our right side, their left side. Mm -hmm. And they have one more than we have the block on their side. Mm -hmm. So you don't know where the extra guy's going to be once they shift. That's right. So, uh, well, here we go, defense. It's time to step up here and so make a big play for the mm -hmm. Mounties. Dalton Rice is back there with Braden Nash in the backfield with him. 23, Vincent to the near side. Trips to the top side. Gives it to Nash. Gets, it, gets about six yards on that carry. Looks like he brought down. Nesto Gonzalez was in there. 
Tyler Pinkerton, I believe, as well. Kyrie Bonneville is one of the defensive linemen out there right now. We'll see if Payson Jones can make a play. Number 22 has made plays all night for the defense. See if he can come up with something big again. Oh, off screen over there to Jackson Bruss, who has it. Pretty good blocking out there. And we get the first down. Run out of bounds by Andrew Trenary. Payson Jones being subbed out. Braxton Lindsay coming in. He switches sides with Isaac Chapman. Isaac Chapman's outside linebacker to the field. Four fifty remaining in the game. Looks like they're going the trips to the top side again. Vincent all alone down here with Cam Cunningham on him. Nash is the up back. Gives it to Nash. Trying to pick his way off to the left side. Finds some room, and he's gone. Is, is he going to knock, knock him out of bounds? Marcus Mouse knocks, knocks him out of bounds at about line. the three-yard line. Mm. My goodness. Well, he, he, he found, picked his way through there. Looks like uh, Braxton Lindsay is coming off a little bit, walking off the sideline here. Maybe it might be his knees, knees bandaged up. About a 40-yard gain for uh, West on that play. I know Braxton been fighting a growing injury for a large part of the season. So uh, here we go, 4.30 left to go. First and goal on the three-yard line for West. Rice has it, gives it to Nash. He's going sideways, trying to find his way through there. Knocked out of bounds. Looked like it was uh, Pinkerton. Tyler Pinkerton knocked him out of bounds. Almost had him in the backfield for about three-yard loss. Second and goal. Ball placed at the one yard line. Got a big window in there for the slant. Mm -hmm. They're going to take it himself. Rice is trying to take it himself. He's hit they hard. They hit hard. Stop yep. short. Stop short. You'd be surprised they come back to the slant to number 23 here to the wide side of the field. Mm hmm. There's a big window in there. Mm -hmm. We've got to put outside back or someone to occupy that window. That's the play they went to on the two-point conversion earlier on. Yeah, they're taking their time here. I mean, bleeding some of the clock. Maybe not want to give as much time to the Mounties, but third and goal. They're bringing Vincent in motion. Well, they give it to him, sweeping around the backside, and he's in. Touchdown, Wolverines. Twenty-three to seventeen, the Wolverines are up. With three ten remaining, we'll see if uh, pending the extra point. Let's see what um, the Mannies can put a pressure on, maybe. Snap and hold, and the kick is good. So Benville West does take the lead, 24-17. to 17. This game was 17-6 to six, not too long ago. 17-6, to six, and I thought we were going to open it up. Missed a couple opportunities. I wouldn't be surprised we come back to the play that we saw earlier with Jacob Jenkins running down the sideline and Jeff Regan through the middle of the, mm -hmm. of the field. I think that would be a good one to come back to at some point. Um, I don't think we have to pass every down, but with the, with the time the way it is, we're going to have to put the ball in the air. Mm -hmm. And I said earlier, we're going to have to find a way to get the ball to number three versus Marbury. Yeah. No, I agree. We haven't called Mabry's uh, name very often tonight. Let's see what the Mounties – can do with the ball in this series. We 
this has always been a tight match between the the Mounties and the and uh, Bentonville West. A little different kickoff formation this time. Yeah. Looks like it can be returnable. Cam Cunningham gets out to out to the sideline. He's got some room. Cuts up the middle and back out to the outside. Really good return by Cam Cunningham. Brings it out to about the 28-yard line. So the Mounties will take over at their own 28-yard line. The ball in the far hash. Yeah, three minutes and one second remaining in the game. The Mounties come out with a trip set to the near side. And it looks like uh, Versa Regan and, and Jansen Garner to the near side. Cash to the far side. Back to pass is Dane. Stay, he's looking deep. Can it throw, oh, no, that's, that's pass good. interference. He oh, pulls, the, he, me. He pulls his me. jersey. That's, ridic that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Uh, I mean. That is, that's, that's hard. That's tough for him not to get that call there. I thought it was Grayson, but it's uh, Jacob Jenkins on the wheel route. That's that's not um, – that was really evident of a pass interference right there. Coming back to the ball, and the guy pulls him down before he can make make the play. Boy, the Mountains are going to need a break. That could have been a break that they needed. They're going to need. They're going to need that break. Well, second and ten ball on the right hash. Mm -hmm. well, twin sets both sides. Jacob Jenkins in the backfield with Dane. Back to pass again. He's going to have to get rid of it. Oh, good pickup. Over the middle. Grayson Cash has it for the first down. Ball up. Yeah. Got a first down ball near midfield. It's a great job by Dane stepping up into the pocket as opposed to rolling outside and having a chance to possibly – they came with that safety blitz too. Vince and Harris. He Vincent came late. Came late, and one of our linemen picked him up late and just smoked him. And uh, was that that was allowed Dane to step up in the pocket and, and complete it to Grayson Cash. Going with an empty set. Four receivers to this uh, near side. Grayson Cash to the far side. Dane back to pass. Looks left on the short one. Oh, just missed on that one, but. There's a linebacker right there. It looks like they have a man down for the for West. And number six is in Boston. Bisco is in out. He's on. Looks like he's injured. See a defensive back. Yeah. What we need to do is find out who his replacement is <laughs> and go right at him. Yeah, I hear you. Well, he's walking off on his own. All right, get ready for the last play. That was a great job, but off of the lineman picking up that delayed blitz. It really was. I mean, and, and I mean the vision that the lineman had to see that was that right. Zimmerman that picked him up, I, I believe. I, I didn't see the replay. You got it again, Zach, or no? Okay, if we don't, we only have a certain amount of storage. Oh, smoked. That's great and field awareness. Too, yep. Got an empty set, quads to the wide side of the field. I think it was Simmerman. Yes, quad side to the near side. Quads to the near side. Dane back to pass. Steps to the left. Oh, those over incomplete to Attempted the chance of Garner. We have third and ten here. Yeah, third and ten. There's plenty of room out to this side. I think just with Dane's knee, he just not able to kind of move like he did in the first couple of weeks of the season. Third and ten. With an empty set, 
Trips to the near side, twins to the top side. Cash and Regan to the top. Dane drops back to pass. Giving away. Goes over the middle. And Jacob Jenkins has it. Looks That's like very it's going to be enough. To a first down. Looks like it's going to be enough. That is a Monty's first, first down. Monty's first down is huge. Third and ten. Jacob Jenkins doing it again. With his hands. Yes. One fifty-three left to go in the ball game. Now he's on the forty-one yard line. Looks like trips to the near side. Jenkins in the backfield. He's rolling this way. That looks like the man has set the edge. Dane looks like he's throwing it to. Oh, oh pass interference. Now we get the call. There it is. There we go. Jansen, intended receiver is Jansen Garner. He got a hand on the ball, but would have gotten two on hands on the ball had he not, not been held. Looks like that with that Boston Briscoll. Briscoll. I don't, can't know how to pronounce his last name, but got back into the ball game. I think that's who it was. Maybe number nine. Keaton Kennan, the free safety, I think was the one who held him. So it's going to bring another first down for the Mounties. Ball is going to be placed on the 26-yard line on the right hash. <laughs> Maybe he's got to get off the line. Grayson's on the line. So trips to the near side. Maybe's in motion. They've been doing this. They've been giving it. Oh, over here. Nope. Rolls out. He's out of the pocket. They've got a guy over there. Maybe he got caught up. They're trying to sneak him out the backside up the sideline. He got mm -hmm. caught up in some trash there by the offensive defense alignment. Mm -hmm. Brings up second and ten. And uh, looks like Dane sometimes doesn't have enough time or something. The pressure has been on him. The pocket hasn't necessarily been clean. But looks like he might have some room to run, too, with the empty set here. They have to respect all these running backs, all these receivers. Come with a, do come with a rush, a five-man rush. He does but find room here down the sideline, and he get does the get the first down. down. Wow, there we go. There's there's that speed. Dan, I told you he was fast. He's been able to do that up up, up until that, these couple of weeks where he hurt his knee, but he looked really good there. I think he's been a little cautious mm -hmm. with that knee. But big time play there to keep the change moves and give us a fresh set of downs. Mm -hmm. Brings it first down on the 15-yard line. 124 left to go in the ball game. Mount is down by seven. They give it to Jacob Jenkins. Puts his foot in the ground. Oh, it's a good hit by number 15. Mount is going to have to hurry here. They've got all their timeouts. Yeah, they've the got coach. all their timeouts. One, oh, 104 left to go in the ball game. Make it a timeout after this play just coming down. Yeah. The Mounties can get a first down at about the five. Well, the trip set to the far side. And maybe by himself right down here, Coach. They go to him. Maybe go get that ball. He Touchdown. Died. I've been calling for it all night. There we go, baby. Had a baby. Maybe one on one. Side. Great job. Great throw to the back of the end zone. Maybe slid on his backside like a second ba going into second base to catch that ball. That was great body control right there by the big receiver, number three. Yes. We've, we've, we've said it. They need to get it to number three. We've been talking about that one-on-one -on -one coverage away from trips all night. Mm -hmm. They finally took advantage of it. Great play called by the coaches there. They're going to call a timeout. Question is, are they going for the tire or are they going for the win? Got a replay on this ball here. We talked about it earlier. We're getting single coverage away from the trip side. This guy's got inside leverage on Verser, number three. He does a great job of keeping his line. 
face, great ball, great body control by number three staying in there. It's like he's flying in the home plate. Great ball, great play. Touchdown, Rogers Mounties. With a chance to win the game here. It looks like the offense is out there. This has been one heck of a ball game tonight, fans. And we still have a packed house. It's 43 seconds left in regulation. The offense is out there. So they do call a timeout and uh, talk it over. They're going to go for the two points here are the Mounties. Oh, boy. Look, look at this setup. They got Jeff Regan back there. Oh, that, that forces uh, West to call a timeout. Boy. Yeah, a little cat and mouse game there. Maybe force them to use a timeout. So they um, both have now two timeouts left. Well, this has just been a, a very interesting ball game, and the Mounties look like they were going to have this game in hand at 17-6 in the fourth quarter. West comes back to score two times in that fourth quarter with eight of two interceptions. And uh, Mounties do get the ball back, and they go down and score, pinning the extra point here. We're going to have a tie ball game where the Mounties are going to be ahead by one. What would you do here? <laughs> it's a tough call. It's a tough call. It's a tough call. I mean, you, you, you play to win. <laughs> you play to win. I know. You play to win. You, don't they always say, like, uh, go for two on the road and, and go for the tie at home? But looks like Coach Harbison is going to go for the go for the two. A lot of coaches have a little card yep. that they use to help them in this situation. Look at this, look at this formation. They got – Jeff is right there. Okay. Now they split out. They got a bunch set to the left. Comes Grayson Cash. They give it to Jeff. Throws it to the end zone. Yeah! Two point conversion. That's a it's great complete. job by the Rogers, Monty's coaching staff. Holy cow. Two point conversion is good. What a Jacob play. Jacob Jenkins in the back in of the, the end zone. In the very back of the end zone. Double reverse flood pattern to the right side of the end zone. You have one shallow, you have one deep. Tell you what, that's a great job there. Yeah, I, I thought Jeff was going to run it in at first, and then then uh, that linebacker kind of was running with Jeff, and he found Jacob Jenkins in the back of the end zone. Mounties take the lead 25-24 on a terrific play call. They must have had that in their back pocket for for weeks, waiting for a moment just like this to call it, to execute it. Perfectly. I, perfectly. I know Jeff told me about this play one time, and I, I had forgotten about it. It was several weeks ago they, they installed it, but – Man, that was exciting. And there's so many layers to that play. You have the formation. You have the motion. Here's the replay here. Yeah, they, they, they bring they, cash they, in they motion. Fake, they fake, they fake the, the toss. Cash. They end the round to Reagan. Then, then the guy. Jacob Jenkins sneaks to the backside of the end zone. And they Two-point conversion is good. Oh, my goodness. And, that, and here it comes again. They, we kind of have them fooled there. They, they think it's just going to be a run play. Look at everybody come at Jeff. Oh, number one's got it. Oh, look at they got three guys in the back of the end. So Jeff could have thrown it to three guys. Man, what a play. So many layers to that play. Yes. So many layers. Great job by the Rogers Monty's coaching staff there to scheme that up. Right time at the right place to use it. Mm-hmm. Man, he's up by one, 25-24. Little squib kick. Oh, that ball's on the ground. Okay. They they fall on it, but mm, 30, 34 yard line. I, I, I like – it's not – it wasn't a terrific squib kick. You know, uh, they do have some good uh, return guys, but I prefer J.T. Miller to just try to boot that deep. So, Benville West does have it at their own 30 – what is that, the 36-yard line. We've got to rally the ball. We've got to keep all receivers in front of us. I believe they have two timeouts or they have one timeout left. I'm not certain. Uh, it should be – yeah, they, they just eliminated it. So, it is two timeouts left. Right now, we need our best guys on the field right now. No mm -hmm. more su situational substitutions. Mm -hmm. This is the situation to have your best ball players in there right now. Now, once again, you know, quarterback's got a big arm, got some good receivers, 
He can throw it deep. They've already witnessed it. He's thrown a 40-yard pass for, you know, uh, down there. Play Marcus Miles over the top of number 23 to Arkansas mm -hmm. State commit. Mm -hmm. And he's looking for him. Oh, that's throwing out of bounds. Great job pressing him to the sideline. Yep. Incomplete. The ball is thrown out of bounds. And no, no. And uh, Cam Cunningham really did a really good job of running him uh, out of the uh, – out of bounds. Got some good friends here watching the game. I mean, this game has just been electric from start to finish. Yes. And we still got 36 seconds left in regulation. West comes up the twin sets on both sides. Nash is next to Rice. Rice back to pass, looking left. Looking. Oh, he throws it to the corner to Jackson Brust. He does catch that. What a throw and catch. Mm. The senior Jackson Bruss had been starting since he was a sophomore. Comes up with a big play there. Boy, I tell you what, he had a lot of time back there in the yeah, defense. Yeah, he did. I, I, I could have sworn there was had to be some sort of holding. I wonder if we're dropping eight and just rushing three, trying to play pre bit and keep it all in front of us. You say 30, 30 seconds. They want to put 30 seconds on the clock. The clock went down to 24. So it goes back up to 30. Well, that was not an easy throw and catch. So, I mean, if the Mounties make them throw and catch like that, it's, I mean, I think that's their advantage. If that ball's hanging up there like that again, we got to do a good job of getting there and mm -hmm. the blue shirt's coming down with it. Yep. Nash it back here again, looking left. Throws it short again to Brust. And he gets about eight yard, eight or nine yards. And it gets out of bounds. The clock does stop. Four seconds run off the clock. 26 seconds remain. That is a lot of time. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of it's time. Like they're trying to get in field goal range. Mm -hmm. I don't know what his range is, but we can't let him get too many more yards. Mm -hmm. Looks like we've got to get to that quarterback. Coach Harbison's going to call timeout here. Manny's going to have to come up with something big. Boy, that kickoff. I kind of wish they just kicked it deep. You know, uh, for them to get the ball on their own 36-yard line just wasn't a very effective one. I don't think JT's um, – he's so good at kicking it deep. He might have preferred just yeah. doing that. I understand the, the, the reason why. Just It just wasn't executed maybe the way they, they liked it. Oh, boy. They got the ball on the 26-yard line. Left hash. 26 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. We saw the – I mean, the – the field goal kicker, I mean, he only had like a what a 15-yard field goal before and barely barely cleared the upright or inside the upright and over the crossbar. And so he may not be the they're, – they're looking to maybe score here and not, not leave it up to the field goal kicker. Here they go with the twin set again. We're going to see if, uh, if the Mounties give that short pass away and if, if, if West does take it. They give it to Nash. Running back, tackled by Corbin Norris, but a solid gain of about five yards. Looks like a call timeout again by West. West timeout. 19 seconds left to go. Ball's in the dead middle of the field. And it's um, second and five. More importantly, 19 seconds 19 remain. 19 seconds is a lot of time with this field position here. Got to find a way to get to that quarterback. I know it's tough. You want to play prevent. You want to keep it all in front of you. But mm -hmm. if he has a lot of time, he's, he's shown a propensity to make a good play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of the managers are going to have to make a play, you know, um, a strip sack, interception, something. I mean, do you take the chance and, uh, and, and blitz a linebacker and uh, you send Isaac Chapman, you know, your all-state all linebacker, and, and just send him and hopefully he gets there? And so here's Isaac Chapman down the near side. And uh, let's see if they send him. And Braxton Lindsay's there too. They're sending, they're sending the house. He gets the ball off. The ball's deep. And it's complete for the touchdown. Touchdown, West. Ball is in the corner of the end zone. 
13 seconds remain in the game. Benville takes a, uh, West takes a 30 to 25 lead. Wow. Wow. Ball was uh, perfectly thrown there in the corner. Vincent, the Arkansas State commit, comes down with it. West leads this series six to one. And, and uh, mm, it's looking grim for the Mounties right now with 13 seconds left to go in the game. Wow. Tough. That is tough. I mean, that was that was a well thrown ball. Well, I mean, he he caught it right there in the corner. But they had that short field to go with. The short field, I think, was the was the key. It was to their benefit. Mm -hmm. I think if we kick it deep there, it's, it kind of mm -hmm. changes. Yeah. Their mindset schematically. Right. Right. Mm. Now, now this is where you squib it. <laughs> Most likely, they're probably going to squib it, probably to of some sort. Thirty-one twenty-five. Seventeen to six to start the fourth quarter, and the Wolverines scored eighteen unanswered points in the fourth quarter alone. They do squib. Jeff Regan does get it, on, on, kind of on a. Oh, he's not, not going to get right out of bounds, about the thirty-yard line. Nine seconds. I assume Benville West going to drop everybody about twenty yards deep. In Coach the back end. Coach Brill is down there drawing up a play on the chalkboard. I saw him down there on the bench drawing something up, and he's calling the offense together and drawing one of those maybe hook and ladder plays of some sort. Maybe something quick, get out of bounds, mm -hmm. and then get a little close and then take another shot to the end zone with our big receivers for the best chance we have at this point. Mm-hmm. You said their defensive secondary is going to be playing awfully deep. Mm -hmm. They're going to give us anything underneath. Yeah, they're just going to rush three. They've got Lane Jeffcoat, big number 77 there, nose guard, just going to eat up some space. Yeah, they've got their defensive backs at the 40 or 50-yard line, which is 20 yards deep right now. So we're going to empty set here. Dane back to pass. Oh, they're going to the screen. Oh, the, back to Jansen Garner. Uh, it's out of bounds. That's the ball game. There's zeros on the clock, and that's the ball game. They're looking for Jansen to throw it to the other side, but that just didn't happen. And turnovers uh, in the fourth quarter spelled uh, doom for the Rogers Mounties, and West comes in here once again and beats the Mounties on their own home turf. Lead the series 7-1 to one now. Mounties just can't seem to get out of the way uh, on some of these occasions, but, boy, this one's going to hurt. Hard-fought game by both, both teams. I think we responded every time we had to. I think, the, as you said earlier, the, the short field for Benville West last position. Well, that's a tough one. That, that's a tough one. Coach is going to be up late tonight looking over the game film and uh, talking about it. And uh, Mounties weren't able to pull it, pull it out for the homecoming for the homecoming crowd. But I, I appreciate you, Coach Hookfin, tonight and staying with me and, and uh, calling this game. Um, it, it's a tough one. 
It is. We're going to have to regroup and we're going to finish out our rest of our conference schedule on a, on a high note. And as I said before, they've got to get this out there system quickly. Uh, we're on the road next week to, mm-hmm. to Spring Springdale. Hope you all tune in and um, we'll be right back at it. Yeah, we'll be right back next week. Thanks, Coach. We'll see you next week.